Are we live? Namaskar, everyone. Welcome to tonight's online panel discussion. Uh, Sitar and us. This is Shubhranit Sarkar. I am a Siparist from Kolkata. And uh, I welcome you all to this uh, attempt to um, speak about music, express our views, and perhaps take some of your questions and answer them. Uh, let me introduce you to all the panelists over here. We have Muthuna Bhattakur. Okay. We have Obhik Mukherjee. We have Abhishek Mollik. We have Shomalo Chakraborty. We have Rohan Das Gupta. We have Ram Prapanna Bhattacharya. Namaskar. We have Abhishek Adhikari. Namaskar. We have Shorojit Shain. Namaskar. We have Shabunnoy Sharkar. Namaskar. We have Deep Shankar Bhattacharya with us. Namaskar. Um, we, we haven't really scripted anything. So this is going to be um, a completely Upaj Ang uh, presentation of ours. Uh, we don't even uh, know how the discussion is going to go. but. Uh, we had a few ideas. Uh, we had a few ideas uh, that we could um, present before you some questions which we feel are important in this age and time. So without further ado, I, I, I'd like to start uh, with the first topic that we have decided, which is importance of learning from gurus, satsang and assimilation. So um, for this question, I would like to start with Muchuna, Dr. Muchuna Bhattakur. So um, Muchuna, if I ask you about your association with your gurus, your inspirations, um, the satsang that you have been able to do and how you have assimilated uh, all these different inspirations into your own music, if you could speak a little bit about it. Thank you so much. I'm really very glad to be here today amongst, uh, you know, so many young uh, musicians, devoted musicians. Oh, I'm really, very happy. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, we need to have a really very good luck to have a good guru. Uh, it, uh, it's like uh, God always writes that, you know, like we have uh, parents, like in the same way, we also need a very good guru and it depends on the disciple also i am fortunate to have uh, my parents who are musicians my father is a tabla player who is the disciple of ustad munne khan sahab and my mother was a disciple of ustad ilyas khan sahab she stayed in lucknow for several years learned sitar from him and later she after uh, ilyas khan sahab demise she went to pandit debu choudhury ji in delhi and I was fortunate to have uh, Rigorius Stalin from my mother, as well as Pandit Devi Chodhriji when I was from the very beginning, when I was a child. And then later I started, when I came to Kolkata to study my graduation, do my graduation and post-graduation in music uh, from Rabindra Bharati University, I also had the fortune to learn, you know, uh, so many intricacies of my Gharana from Pandit Deepak Chodhriji. And that was uh, really, you know, like a, gift for me mm. i think guru is the most important factor and also the satsang i was fortunate like uh, like you all i was also fortunate to have uh, you know like at our home ustad munne khan sahab used to come my father's ustad ji from lucknow uh, to assam he stayed in our place uh, for several days like for one month my father used to learn my younger bro my brother used to learn and in this way we had a good association. I mean, we got not only music, actually. And they talked about music, the stories of the lesions, and the environment there. We got that. That was important to create that en environment, actually. 
huh? i think all of us have that kind of environment so it helps in the grown you know how we grow up later it depends on so many things we get in our childhood actually that's the most important thing um so, and we went to different yeah yeah so uh, if i ask you uh, mm -hmm. what were the things like we talked about environment you talked about environment like the mahol as they say so what kind of mahol were you experiencing when you were a kid like for example let me give you some examples um yeah. um abigda abig mukherji and me uh, we have shared a lot of time together from our childhood because our parents were friends and uh, my own brother who used to learn tabla uh, and abigda okay. used to practice a lot together so what i can say about my own uh, you know the mahol that i had at home just to add to your uh, yeah, yeah. point is that you know both in in our in both the families of ours we had all the lps of pandit ravi shankar ji uh, eps you know the apple records in sindh bhairavi yeah, yeah. of uh, the, the mm -hmm. duet you know the iconic recordings the uh -huh. sindh bhairavi gara of vilat khan saab mm -hmm. you know yes. recordings all these things Yeah, and yeah. i feel that uh, my parents uh, they were always playing that you know all all throughout the waking hours we had this that is uh, really at necessary at the background yeah. you know right. so what kind of mahol was there what kind of environment was there at your house yeah yeah the you say it now ustad vilayat khan saab's yaman was there i used to listen from my childhood huh although i am not from that uh, lineage or i mean not from that uh, gharana directly but i heard a lot and since my mother was from sahajanpur gharana lakhnow sahajanpur gharana obviously i used to listen a lot of her. they they had cassettes you know they were bought from even uh, whenever someone used to go to germany or someone they used to bring some cassette as a gift so uh, those things they used to record na sometimes so i used to listen a lot is the elias khan sir and of course vilayat khan sir i uh, i mean they are all stalwarts nikhil banerji uh, we used to listen from the morning even some amir khan sir mm -hmm. and uh, so this is really necessary i think uh, this is the most important part oh, not only you know like practicing several hours yeah that is really necessary but you have to listen a lot uh, that which uh, true. true yeah yeah that uh, goes gradually when i was child i couldn't realize the importance of that i used to listen i liked but the importance the necessity of that necessity of that thing it comes now gradually. you realize now yeah, yeah. true true yeah. true true right like after so, when i was like 20 or 24 i used to realize i started realizing and that's, it that's depends lovely. on the, uh, yeah and some rag you know i used to uh, i think today that when i feel when i was a small uh, small child or when i was like 18 or 17 when i used to uh, listen some ragas that didn't used to appeal that much i know i liked but that appeal or that feel came with time it comes with time uh, right. i think True. even we to do religious practice that the feeling comes with time i think Huh? True, very true. It comes with maturity, with time, yeah. with spending time with other maestros and talking about music, listening to great performances mm -hmm. right in front. Right, that it's inspiring. So, uh, taking that cue, if I if I ask Ram Prapanna Bhattacharya, like how was your um, how was your environment when you were growing up? Was it very different or was it very similar? How how was it? thanks to brunil uh, and my greetings to everyone um it was kind of similar because my father uh, learned from stalwart instrumentalists of that that era including ustad ali ahmed khan sahab ustad mustaq ali khan sahab all from different gharanas ali ahmed khan sahab uh, from mahihar gharana mustaq ali khan sahab from senia gharana and uh, pandit gokul nag as we all know bishnupur gharana and finally pandit in from pandit indranil bhattacharya was probably the last disciple of alauddin khan sahab so <clears throat> i started uh, listening to sitar before even in from my mother's home and our family being kind of a spiritually inclined family we used to have every evening we used to have kirtan uh, in our home uh, our uh, my paternal aunts my mother and everyone in family used to gather and sing devotional songs which were based on rag rag music so that was so a uh, kind of uh, introduction uh, even without knowing the rag rag pilu now i understand that is based in rag pilu that is based in rag puriya dhanashri yaman and all so that was uh, 
going in by subconscious from the beginning and we initially we did not have a tape recorder or cassette player my paternal uncle as i uh, started to have interest in music he gave one tape recorder and two recordings i clearly remember uh, that he gave ustad ali ahmed husain khan sahab shahnai darwari malkons with sabir khan sahab on tabla and another one pandit nikhil banerjee's hem hem lalit uh, uh, mm-hmm. mishra gara lit uh, hem uh, and uh, you know malkons and sindhu bhairavi epic recording with pandit tanai datto so my father used to play that every night when we used to the, uh, sleep so that created a haunting impact on classical music and gradually uh, he introduced to other great maestros including pandit ravi shankar ji ustad vilayat khan sahab hab halim we are talking about that triveni cassette right ravi khan sahab halim ravi khan sahab and vilayat khan sahab so my father ensured that i get diverse taste including vocal and instrumental music that helped me immensely uh, and uh, you know and just to give a little background of our uh, family my great grandfather used to play sarangi and clarinet they didn't pursue uh, professionally he was very close friend of girija shankar chakraborty and amyonath sharma so all the, uh, all these things helped us a lot uh, you know to imbibe music uh, so there were uh, you know as they say acche sunkar uh, so they were those kind of people also pursuing music yeah that makes such a big difference right yes so it was uh, all uh, because let, of let, my parents and grandparents yeah true true that impact, that is yeah. that is so close to uh, i think most of us what we have experienced yeah. in life i think the seeds have to be sown by somebody in the family that support is important mm, right for 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 you to grow as a musician as a student actually so with that i know mm, uh, samanna bhai we had had a we have had a chat earlier as well um his father also had learned sitar and uh, could not pursue that uh, professionally but he wanted him to play so if i could request shabanna bhai to speak about his mahol at home how was it actually when i started i just uh, i would like to mention two things first of all one is uh, the term guru yeah guru shows the path right and uh, i think in case of all of us and uh, there is a proverb in banaras it says it says that pani piyo chhan ke aur guru karo jaan ke right so it, it, this is said in banaras so i am pretty sure that when we all started all of us who survive is here when we all started we didn't have the chance to guru karo jaan ke right but at the same time in our scriptures and the, you know culture it is said that mata pita param guru right so for all of us i think they were the first first ones who shows showed us the path right and in case of my father in case of my father actually in my family all my uh, elder uncles from paternal side they all learned right my elder uncle uh, he he learned from uh, sangeeta acharya vishwadeep chatwadhyay my uh, middle uncle uh, he uh, learned with 12 years from sushi hirabai bharadkar ji right and my father himself he actually initiated uh, himself in vocal learning of course uh, and he learned from my uncles and later from you know the uh, disciple of the great legend exponent uh, sadbargal ami khasas disciple his name was pandit lalit mohan channal ji right and at some at uh, at some point he decided that he will learn sitar he would learn sitar to some extent it, it was just a hobby because already he was into 10 to 5 job so to take that uh, take music as a profession as a profession was gone that chance that, that chance was gone by that time right so he decided to learn sitar to, to some extent for his own hobby and own you know the music uh, the love for music and passion for music and he did find it difficult because uh, those uh, those days the communication was i mean i'm t- talking about 35 years back communication was not that good right so from where and we shifted to sonarpur it's quite that time it was quite outskirt of the city yeah and from sonarpur to go to splanet for office and all 
and he used to return home by 7:38 and you know tired like anything so he uh, found it uh, pretty you know it's not working so he decided to sell it off that's it that then my mother said that you know that time i was only 4 years old yeah then my mother said that if an instrument has come to your house let's not sell that yeah but let let us try with uh, our boy and that was the initiation uh, and that was the initiation uh, on my parents behalf for me and then i mean till i uh, became like 15 16 or maybe a little little older they uh, had taken all the decisions about the gurus because i have learned with several gurus right and they have taken the decision so far that whom to learn yeah whom to go so in that case of course guru must be there guru is so but that pita mata param guru is so significant for me and i think for everyone here then i learned i went to pandit shashank bandopadhyay first then to pandit manilal nag ji for 12 years yeah then pandit shamul chatopadhyay for 5 years then pandit kumar prasad mukherjee and lastly vidushi girija devi ji so i learned only last two decisions i took myself rest of the decisions of sitar learning was taken by my father actually my parents so this way it started right and i think it's pretty pretty similar with all of us the initiation actually into music somewhere into professional field somewhere not somewhere amateur somewhere even great lover and you know admirer of music with great passion like my father True. So, true. So that's, that's so lovely. Yeah, that's so lovely. So, um, you know, it's very important for uh, the 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 you know the audience to also know about each one of us. So, I'll be asking each one of you the same question at the very beginning. Later on, we are going to move on to several topics. So, um, my next question, taking the cue from Samanna Bhai, would be. for deep shankar deep shankar um could you please tell me about your childhood uh, what was the mahol at your home um greetings to all of you and thank you shurunilda for inviting me and you know i think it's it's pretty same to with all of you uh, i started learning from my father and i'm still learning from him and uh, another person who is my mother parul bhattacharya she is uh, she used to learn from pandit kt kanan his disciple of pandit kt kanan and uh, uh, then after uh, i uh, went to bombay and uh, took talim from uh, my dada guru padma bhushan ustad abdul halim zafar khan sir and also when he visited our at our place i used to learn from him and it's like uh, it's the relationship between me and abdul halim zafar khan dada guru dada ji is like a, grandson and grandparent because i never seen my grandfather but i never missed uh, my grandfather it's, it was like the same uh, feeling so i'm still learning from my father so um, it's like for me the thing is that every day uh, till now my father is 71 till now he is practicing 7 to 8 hours a day and uh, it's not for something to get it's like uh, uh, he can't live without it so for me sure. uh, uh, for me it's like uh, i whenever i'm i'm in the house and doing something not practicing or not uh, with the music but my ears are open because i want to listen what my father is saying you know so several compositions and uh, he just he, he uh, always uh, play music with for himself not for audience it doesn't matter to him it doesn't matter that who is listening who is not listening even uh, so this is the atmosphere and my mother mm, is like uh, she is the biggest critic in my life and whenever i play something uh, she decides that uh, whether the uh, she has a very good ear and she can tell me precisely that uh, this part you should improve this Come part up. is not, so this is this is the way i'm i'm you know i'm surrounded by and i'm uh, learning music every day so this is this is my mahol 
क्या बात है that's and, that's uh, so uh, nice actually that reminds me of something that reminds me of something that my ustad had said you know uh, an incident occurred where his whole bag along with passport and uh, you know some you know money and all this um, it's not some it's a lot of money but it got lost and i asked how was like, how how did you deal with it and he said like you know if money bag and you know chain and the passport all these things go it's not a big deal but if sitar goes then i won't be able to exactly stay alive so that no, is exactly one thing, one thing is uh, i'm so fortunate that uh, my father is my guru so i have a 24 hours uh, guru at my place whenever i'm practicing and wrong i'm practicing wrong wrong way then there is someone who can you know tell me that this is not proper you have to do like this sure. so this is sure. uh, god give me this opportunity sure. so i i think i'm 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 really lucky because i have this option absolutely that's so nice and and he, he, your father uh, is a super fantastic uh, musician and he's so i think i'm sure he's so happy to have you as his son because you're such I, a I loving so. son and i hope so yes absolutely you 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 respect your father so much always i have seen that it's so nice and uh, um, so taking the cue from that let's go to rohan who happens to be your cousin as well and yes. uh, have learned from the same gurus so yes. rohan tell tell me about uh, uh, the shared history i'm sure both of you grew up together playing football and playing music and doing all the nuisances that kids do together how was it how was your own uh, mahol at home well uh, i was not meant to be a musician when i was a child i was a very naughty one and i think my parents were having a hard deal to to deal with me and of course uh, being in a family with uh, with uh, like my guru my mausa ji or mesho pandit haro shankar bhattacharya so no one can escape the the you know the oh, yeah. hard world of learning music and it happened so that he gave me his others um sitar the first time a black small one and 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 i started to you know to learn from him from there and of course when dada guruji happened to visit here um, in the earlier times me and dip shankar we had the best times of our lives you know playing our little notice uh, stunts and also day long learning and it was a uh, a bringing that we never realized until we reached this age of maturity that i think we learned a lot subconsciously passively and also directly you know the body language that a student needs the the methodology that one needs to focus to to increase your power of observation to increase your power of hearing you, you don't only hear or hear with your ears you also hear with your eyes and nose and every organs that you have sure. similarly I, i mean to to have to develop the body language of a good student we were very very fortunate to be in that surrounding with musicians sure. my sister is is also a singer as you know my elder sister so while she was also learning and practicing in in the day and i was just playing nonsense around i also imbibed a lot of information passively that helped me in learning later on so in this way it's a beautiful journey so far and and i think i share a more than father and son relation or more than anything else with my guru and he loves me so much and i'm really fortunate to have a brother like dip shankar and uh, today is a wonderful day that i can i can sit with all the stars of our of my generation and get to learn and absorb so much from you all so i'm really thankful shubhranilda for involving me here so thank you again uh it's our pleasure to have you over here rohan i uh, absolutely like your your um work in several different genres that you have worked in um it 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 reflects refinement it reflects research it reflects time that you have invested in that music so i love that 
And it, these are wonderful things that come, I think, because of Tezi. Uh, I personally believe this is the this is what you were trying to say. You were you were saying that how to behave as a student. Like for yes. example, if you want to absorb some of this beauty, you cannot steal and absorb the beauty of that thing. You have to appreciate the beauty to actually absorb it. So there is a difference between absorbing and stealing. And that yes. Tazib's, uh, that is what Tazib is all about. You you realize how you have to be. And uh, it's, it's really revealing what you said. It's wonderful what you said. So Thank taking the cue from there, let's, let's go to uh, Obisek Molik. And, uh, and Obisek, tell me about your childhood. How was your childhood? How, how was your grooming? How was, your, how was the atmosphere? The satsang that you have done, you know, like all those things. Okay, it's a little bit different from what everybody has said. First of all, greetings to all of you and thank you for inviting me. It feels like Ashtami of Durga Puja in advance. <laughs> okay. I was an extremely boisterous child, so my parents had a very hard time to deal with me. So uh, my back, musical background does not uh, get into the classical music because my father is a guitarist and he was one of the founder members of a very popular choir in Kolkata called Calcutta Choir. Uh, Kolan Shenborad, my father, they were like childhood friends. So my exposure to music was through the concerts that I used to go and watch my father perform. But uh, my mother had an inclination towards classical music and she wanted me to get into, to learn something from the classical background. My intention was to like hang the guitar around my neck and like imitate my father and the other Western musicians like that. Anyway, so I started with Tabla from Pondit Omar Bosch, the youngest brother of uh, Pondit, uh, Shamul Bosch, Govind Bosch. And uh, then uh, um, after learning for like two and a half or three years, he left Kolkata uh, for some reason. And uh, uh, at that time, I, I was so naughty that I told my mom and dad that if I have to learn from a guru, he has to be very good looking. Because Monty Tamar Bosch was very good looking. That's nice. So, <laughs> Exactly. I used to go to well, that's a very important a school called technique right? school in uh, Shialda. Yeah. yeah. So they tried different options and I was like, no, he's not good looking. He's not like that. He's not like all those things happened. And then finally, uh, a day my guru, Pandit Shamal Chattopata, he walked in and he was just about to retire from the post of assistant commissioner of police. And he was extremely handsome, like over six feet tall. And he just walked in and the person in charge told my mother that you can put him into sitar. And uh, and she was like, it's such a difficult instrument. We don't have any lineage, what to do with him. He said, like, just try it out. And uh, that's how it started. I went inside and uh, Guruji was like, Shamunayda. yeah, Shamunayda yeah. would know Guruji <laughs> like so many years back. He was like this tall sitting and he was like, why you play sitar? You play tabla, why do you want to play sitar? I was like, no, my guru left. I want to play the sitar. You have any idea about sitar? No. I just learned tabla. Please just stay with me. I just stayed and he said, like, okay, fine. He's a kid. And let's put him into sitar without much uh, hope or anything. And that's how the journey started. And then I learned with him for more than uh, almost around 15 years. Uh, after which I also uh, felt a knack uh, for learning with uh, for for going and ex explore uh, exploring other gharanas in the, in the sense closer to my gharanas obviously so i also learned from pandit manilal nagji that was at a later stage when i was like in my high school learned from him as well and then my journey continued under both the gurus and uh, so a boisterous child turned into a Sitarist, you can say whatever, like by God's grace. That's 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 really lovely, Abhishek. And I think amongst all the others over here, and Obikda will know and vouch for it. I think I share a very similar kind of childhood because my parents, you know, they had a severely difficult time making me do riyas, and um, and uh, the way to make me do riyas was my father sitting right in front of me and saying, "Okay." 
do this one at a time. Other, otherwise, you're not going to do... Uh, no, I had some reverence for my father. But, you know, mothers, even if you have reverence, it's a different kind of relationship, right? And when my mother used to say, she used to say, that, okay, um, you know, practice this much and then I'm going to allow you to go and play. And I said that I'm not going to practice, I'm not going to play as well. So very similar to your childhood. And, uh, yeah, we are, we are going to go out and have some coffee very soon, Abhishek, and talk about... Yeah, only, only they know what they went through, like someone oh my said, God. Oh, mother. <laughs> they are our first gurus, only they know how they dealt with us. Oh my God, oh my God, <laughs> absolutely. That, that, that brings Ovikda into the fray. Ovikda, uh, please speak about your, you, you yeah, charges. Sure, I, I would uh, like, uh, as your mic is unmuted, I would also want Rambai to unmute the mic because we all shared the same gurus at some points of time. So um, uh, yes. when it started, you remember, we, uh, my, my, the same way, my mother used to um, take care of the practices that my dad gave and went to the office. And I didn't like playing sitar because I was more into cricket, as you know. <laughs> so me and your brother, we were there. And uh, so then finally, I got very much interested. And me and uh, Indronil was playing all the time. And uh, um, that's where it all started. Like when you're 13, 14, you suddenly get an interest. And then that becomes your life. And then I remember first day I went to Kashi Jetu. Um, I, I was copying Usad Dilayat Khasab like blindly. So I was, uh, I uh, copied his Yaman and went to play there. So I remember the first thing that was, I, I played, I started with da, da, na, that sort of a phrase. So he stopped me and asked, you know, what is this? I said, Dhasani. He said, no. I said, Dhasani, Desani, no. Then it said, Dhasani, Desani, Sani from Dha. So that's how the training started. And it went on for like uh, three, four months, um, continuously from Madha Nisa, Madha Nisa, Re, that part. And then I was supposed to just copy his style in the beginning. And after a month or two, it was, I am giving an expression, you give me a different expression. Tell Don't me. follow. So that's how it started. And then uh, uh, Rambhai also joined. And then um, I remember when Rambhai went to Bombay, um, he and Tushar Dada uh, talked of uh, Pandit Ardin Parikji. And so that's Tushar where... Dada means Tushar Bhatia. Bhai. Tushar Bhatia ji. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah Tushar yeah. Dada. Yeah. So, um, and that's when I went to Guruji and I took uh, Kashi Jitu's permission. And Kashi Jitu was very ecstatic and said, yeah, yeah, go, go, you're doing nothing here. You know, so, <laughs> <laughs> so the way you know him, right? So, oh, yeah, so he, he said, yeah, so person. you're doing nothing here, you should go and learn. So that's how it all started. And uh, regarding the importance of a guru in life, as the question was, you know, uh, I should uh, refer to uh, Ram Krishna uh, Dev's one anecdote that well, he was sitting with a student by the side of the Ganges in Dakshineshwar. So the student asked, what's the importance of a guru? You said everyone will get liberated at some point of time. What's the point of a guru? So he said that you look at the boat that's crossing from Dakshineshwar and going to Bali or Belu somewhere, you know. So how long will it take? The student said it's a rowboat, so it will take at least uh, one hour and 30 minutes to reach there. But well, yeah, now you tie it to the launch over there, the steamer, and it will go in 15 minutes. So that's the part of a guru. It saves time True. because, and, and they show you the re right way to whatever, wherever you want to go. So Absolutely. Uh, I want to add something over there, Ovigda. You have mentioned that hmm. after a few months, hmm. uh, Kashi Jetu, Pandit Kashina Mukherjee, your guru, Ram Prakana's guru, and of course, a great maestro of Indian classical music, student of Ustad Gilad Khan Sahib, Pandit Srinivas and Ustad Amir Khan Sahib. Now, mm. he comes with lineage, with knowledge. He had associations with uh, Bari Gulam Ali Khan Sahib and so many greats. And I think being a great guru, he also saw that you are in that stage where you could be told that don't mm. copy me. Because remember, mm. Ovigda, when you went to him, you were mm. already very advanced. So all by that time, you had practiced and played. You could play the Darbari of um, uh, Vilayat Khalsa. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. By that time, you had <laughs> yeah but when, when, if, I, if I look back at it, you know, I, it, it seemed very childish at that time. You know, like, you know, when you look back at your play, like 20 years, 10 years, you know, you true, feel like, true, ah, true, true, what true. I used to do, I, I feel embarrassed, you know, hide your face. That sort of a thing, true. you know. 
But but <laughs> well, I added that, just added that parallelly because I think there might be uh, some students also listening to this show. Uh, so perhaps uh, to understand what Kashi had to said to you needs to be understood in a more complete way that you were right. already advanced. That's why yes. he felt that. Yeah, important. very good point. So yeah, that yeah, brings definitely. us to a very Right. This is the rule, rule, rule. Then there is no difference. very valid go point. Go very go. valid point. Very rule. valid point. So very valid it's point. refined to serve the purpose of that person who is sitting right in front of you. So wonderful, Avigda. And uh, so, I will just stop from there. Uh, so yeah, sure. Yeah, uh, just want to add a yeah. couple of things because sure, I just talked about but the mahol about in, in our family. But I right. learned from my father primarily uh, and initially, and then uh, from Pandit Somitra Lahiri, who was my father's very close friend and guru bhai. Because he was very busy with job and all, he asked me to go to him uh, and to you know get association of an artist, performing artist. And when I had inclination with Bilat Khansab's gharana and music, then uh, J.K. Sengupta Ji, Jayanto Kaku, at his shop, uh, he introduced my father with Avigda's father, uh, uncle. So in that way, Avigda took the initiative to take me to yeah. Kashi Babu. So I, yeah, I am immensely yeah. grateful to him yeah, yeah. for doing this. Right. Yeah, we have done a lot of riyas together with Avigda yes. and learned many things. And also with Obishak Mullik, he played, we, we played sitar together, practiced together, learned together. Like we did, we did engineering. Right, together. we studied together and also. Yeah, we studied we together and he used to uh, let me mention to... Ram Prapundu's house from my house is like hop skip jump. Yeah, but... <laughs> it was and the same with Subrunil and us. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. We used to be every weekend, either yeah, yeah. Ovidda's family used to be at our yeah, house yeah, yeah. or we used to be at Ovidda's house. That's yeah, how our yeah. childhood was. And both of us, we started, I mean, Ovidda started with Taku, um, mm. uh, yes. Ovidda's father, uh, Sri Torit Mukherjee, but also with Sri Bimal Chakrabhadha. And uh, I also started, actually because of Ovidda, I started, um, I think my parents felt inspired looking at this young Ovigda playing nice because he used to play very nice from his childhood. So, and uh, they, they, they started so, me into sitar. I think that was. Yeah, really and that, nice. that was the it same was nice sitar. Time, that was the same I'm sure he was equally yeah. handsome at that time as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Shubranil, uh, he's talking about Shubranil. Yeah, he was. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, but only people never saw the handsome part of myself. Which is very sad. <laughs> well, let's let's go to um, Shorojit Shain. Shorojit, let's talk about your childhood, uh, about your upbringing in music. My question was about not just a descriptive um, way of answering this question, but more like what is the importance of your guru. So, of course, please, if you can also elaborate on what was the importance of your gurus in your life, the satsang that you have done, yes. and how you have assimilated those things. Because all of you over here, I feel most of you have learned from um, um, more than one person. So, more than one. Uh, yes. Yeah, so how, and, and also from different traditions. So how did you assimilate that into your music? So if you could answer that. Yes, yes. Okay. My greetings to one and all. And I am very fortunate to be here. And uh, we all are very good friends. So my heartiest welcome to one and all. Uh, taking a cue from your question. Uh, my initiation was started as Samanwai Bhai has said, uh, Guru Chuno Janke. So we didn't have any uh, option for, uh, in, in our tender age. Uh, yes. Actually, my and initiation was started uh, along with just like Subranil and Avigda uh, and uh, in, in the northern part of the city in Calcutta. We are from the northern and Abhishek Adhikari. We, yeah. we belong to from the same area. It is Baranagar and we started... In fact, which is completely a, outside the country. This is not even in India. Where you stay. Okay, 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 okay. Is it? <laughs> no, 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 no. Just <laughs> is it near <laughs> uh, No, no, it is in Khola. <laughs> okay, let's go on. Yeah, yeah please. Carry please. on, sorry, carry sorry. on. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. and we eventually, we studied in the same school, Ramakrishna Mission Ashram, 
Baranagar. Yes. And our childhood was like like in other uh, friends in our classroom class, our uh, football, cricket, and other games. Along with the sitar training, we started our journey. My me and Abhishek Adhikari started our journey uh, from Professor Shukumar Chandraji, who is a yes. senior disciple of Pandit Ravi Shankarji, the earliest, most earliest disciple. So yep. during my initiation days, I was not able to understand the importance of this kind of technical things like Guru's head, right hand practice, dara da dara da dara. My brain not used to take, <laughs> I, I, I was not uh, agreed with my guru mentally. I didn't show any, any kind of arrogance or any other things. But my mind is more inclined to the, the essence of music, the musicality. As because I am not from a very professional musician's family. In, in my lineage, there is no musicians. Unlike others, I am not from a, even Abhishek has a great lineage of music. He is from a, a very, very old lineage of uh, Pandit Bhagavan Das Shedari, Mastad Bhagavan Das Shedari from Dhaka. True. Yeah, very true. Uh, but but myself is just just from a very um, normal Bengali family. My father was very fond of classical music, and he intended me to take into classical music a difficult instrument like sitar. And I used to listen to all these recordings available, all the cassettes available. When I scored good marks in my exam, my father said, okay, you got 100% in maths. Uh, let's, uh, here's a gift for you. From this revision could this cassette, Ustad Vilayat Khan Sahib's Sindhi uh, Bhairavi. I was amazed. So this is the first thing, this, this was the first Mahul. And in the further years, uh, after the sad demise of uh, Professor Sukhmar Chandraji, I used to learn, uh, I used to take my talim from Padma Bhushan Pandit Buddhadev Das Gupta Ji of Senior Sajahanpur Gharana. And at that time also I am in class 10th, 11th. So that is not a very matured age. Even. Uh, I, <coughs> I have learned a completely different kind of techniques, completely different kind of approach to the music. Like you all know, the Senya Sajanpur Gharana is derived from the Gwalior actually. And it has a, a long lineage with Rabab. As because Rabab has a very tiny sustenance. So there, there is a lot of right hand work rather than left hand work. But in sitar, it's a it's a very huge sustenance we all have. So I used to take learning all, and when I I was in Esari, ITC Sangeet Research Academy scholar, I was very much fortunate to have vocal learnings and from different gharanas gurus like Pandit Ajay Chakravarti ji, Pandit Mullah Kashalkar ji, Ustad Mashkur Ali Khan Sahab, and uh, not in a very formal manner, and I was very. Well, well, what kind of that 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 brings me to a question? What kind of uh, bandishes did you learn, and how did you incorporate that in your music? Like, uh, if you could give some idea about what kind of bandish, any any uh, many many kind of old age bandish, and uh, like. Difficult perplexity, difficult perplexity, and difficult uh, different different kind of approach with uh, different gharanas. Like I can say, there is a thumkhyal bandish. I used to learn in uh, learn from the Kirana gharanas, Mr. Mashkur Ali Khan Sahab. I they, they didn't tell me how to incorporate in sitar. <laughs> in my small learning. Uh, it might be right, might be wrong, but I tried it to execute on sitar as per sitar's diction. 
लाइक ए स्मॉल एग्जांपल आई एम गिविंग देखो रोको ना चल गल गोरी देखो रोको ना चल गल गोरी मत कर बर जोरी शाम बनवारी जी नट पर गिरधारी मैं तो पैया लगू तोरी तू तो वैसो डीट भाई होरी देखो रोको ना चल गल गोरी एंड this is this is a this is not a very usual approach of khayal singing this is a very old kind of bandish true and when true. i used to play is this on sitar i need to calculate the effect of the bandish in in any kind of any form of uh, music ultimately we need to think about the effect it's not about the exact intonation so i i made it da 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 in sitar diction you are understanding all we are and especially in antara part uh, like i am just 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 a one minute example i'm sure it's a wonderful thing please go on yeah like bridge ki gali no me la la tu kare tera aiso te pati bhai o nand ko kumar aiso te pati bhai o nand ko kumar leeni chal saka sab gwal bal muhe ghir liyo sab ko re sab hot kya pori tu to aiso deer bhai o re dekho ko na chal ga mori so in this bandish there is a text in sitar i don't have the text there is a literature there is a poetry i don't have that but i need to create that diction of the uh, of the same effect like in i am just giving one example there are thousands of you all play the vocal bandish samanay bhai you uh, subranil ramprapanna deep shankar and every everybody have played vocal bandishes on sitar but in that case we need to be very cautious like uh, uh, very common bandistan kaptan we all play tan kaptan but as we our, our guru just abhishek malli bhai said our guru only can knows that how 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 much naughty we all are uh, especially me and many many of us were so they they need to scold us about the training about the all this thing but uh, we we all know that what to practice like right and practice and all this thing in tan kaptan <laughs> this is a famous bandish for tan but usually a vocalist can do can uh, achieve such a line we can go far far above of the that line we we play till dhala din din nara din din nara din din this is this is not a very vocal like uh, effect a vocalist it's it's not very easy <laughs> i am not telling about the big stalwarts the mount everest like ustad nazakat salamat ali and 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 all but uh, usual uh, you are understanding what i am telling <laughs> oh, oh yeah or, what what you yeah, are saying is very basically important. i feel um what you are saying is that um from your perspective talim is important association is important but yes. how musically intelligent you are that you can absorb yes. all the things that you are learning that is very important as well that's what yes, we want yes, to say right absolutely. that's that's a fantastic point actually but it's a very important point that you said um that brings us to uh uh shomallo shomallo um if you could say a few things about the same topic the same subject like how was your mahol at home and how did you uh gain out of it because of the mahol at home and the because ball. of your association with yeah. um the um, fantastic musicians maestros that you have spent time with first of all greetings to all of you and Uh, I am Thank very you. much glad that Shubhmanil is back soon. So, um, my father was a vocalist. He was a disciple of Pandit Birish Roy. Uh, not only classical. Uh, I used to listen uh, light song in uh, my home from the beginning of childhood. So one day, uh, one incident happened. Uh, 
my father gave me a uh, cassette of pandit nikhil banerji uh, it's a rag one side rag was um, i think a month or the other side was uh, mia ki todi yeah so i was very much spell bound about listen to you listen to this cassette so after that uh, i started my sitar learning to so, pandit hardashankar bhattacharya who is a father of dip shankar bhattacharya and then uh, i was for, i am very much fortunate for learning pandit kushal das ji who is which is uh, till now oh yeah absolutely great master yeah. so from the beginning of childhood mahol uh, was very much in my house so how to practice what is the riyaz what is the practice this is the uh, guideline my father gave already this is the way this is the uh, necessary to do this do this so that is my uh, that's that the story of my starting of start kya yeah, baat that's that's beautiful i think uh, that you were fortunate to be born in a musician's family and yeah. uh, what happens with that is that mm. you have a slightly better idea about how to move forward with riyaz it's not a yeah, aimless yeah. hunt after music no. but more like a more fine tuned approach um, yeah uh, that was from uh, beginning beginning of my childhood exactly exactly that that makes a big difference actually uh, and uh, also i feel if you have a uh, you know from from your childhood if you have a guru who understands the psyche of a child yeah i think it makes a big difference which i would say i myself am very fortunate uh, to have learned from shri bimal chatterjee when i was a child yeah. now i remember only one thing that mm. see uh, we often talk about technique right we often talk about right technique perfect technique and all these things but the fact is that technique perhaps is not as um standing right on a needle's point but technique is more like a way a path and you should not be going beyond that path you the path is wide but you should not be going beyond it's more more important to express your music no i i meant to say about the childhood because at that time yes. uh, as a five year old it's very difficult to express without mm-hmm. maturity yeah. any music music right mm-hmm. so i'm talking about that time and then uh what i realized was that now i realized that my uh first guru sri bimal chatterjee um he never he never put this idea that you are wrong instead what he what he did was he put yeah. this idea that these are the right things that you are doing and that positive approach makes a huge difference yeah um especially for people like obigda and others but not for me of course as you understand i never did riyas as a child so uh, <laughs> but I, i'm just joking i mean um, uh, that makes a big difference and i'm so happy that you were born in a musician's family and you knew what to work with yeah. i have seen many people learning very randomly from perhaps videos audios internet and other sources of course there is a time to learn from all those things but when to learn is very important yeah. right you cannot just learn right away when you start okay this is the finger placement for sita then you might not be understanding is not why right is it yeah. so exactly yeah yeah so yeah. you have been very fortunate to be to to have got all those yeah. training so um how how did you assimilate that on to, uh, into your music uh when i came to my uh, guru pandit kushal das one day he called me that um, you told your house hey, you will come three or four days hello ha huh? yeah and <laughs> you come my house with sitar and some baggage so uh, it is a it was a uh, 
great experience how practicing a separate pieces separate uh, ornaments throughout one to four days it is a great experience it was a great experience to me because i didn't know so associated uh, to my music it very much helped on from the dead day how to dias what to do dias it is very much uh, help me that is true but that's that's why people are fortunate uh, when they come in touch with real gurus who yeah. wish to reveal mm. and not just uh, guessing themselves about music and technique that that is one thing that one has to avoid i feel to learn yeah. from the person who <clears throat> has the understanding of music of performance and also the understanding of the psyche of the person who is learning from uh, for from you and then you can express and i want to add over there uh, i have learned from ustad shahid pervez khan sir and uh, i feel you know when you have something inside perhaps there is a potential inside right it also needs a kind of you know spark yeah and yeah. it needs the right person to you know strike that otherwise mm-hmm. that spark never comes you know it's this connection between that person that deeper love that ignites that fire so i i relate to what you said because that it's is very true. important it's to be true. with that person who inspires you Yeah, yeah, and uh, and 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 can light the spark as well in you. It's a connection that matters more than perhaps just sitting with a few alankars or sargams and compositions that people learn. Because how will you make sense of all the things that you have learned until unless you have a deeper relationship with your guru, right? That connection is important. That vibration is important, perhaps. That's My Ustad right. says right. vibration, so I I, I right. love that. So right. that that brings me to. Uh, obishek odhikari and uh, obishek you have been uh, fortunate to have been you know uh, born in a family where there were musicians and uh, even down the line um, some of your family members were musicians um, they had a lineage and uh, yep. uh, ustad bhagwan das shetari was you know really noted i remember when i i i met your father i mean we have yes. i i'm not going yeah, to get, get into all the yep. yeah 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 we have spent so much time together vishek um and beautiful uh, time together right music, playing eating. discussing eating <laughs> and everything right so that was the beautiful yeah. part of our childhood and yes. uh, when your dad said about that story that legend when um there was um there was a drought in uh, bangladesh and uh, and uh, you know clothes were hanging outside uh, in in the raj darbar you know the family yeah had put up clothes over there yeah yeah and then uh, somebody yeah. said that uh, where is rain can do you have, does music have that has does music yeah. Uh, yeah. possess that power to bring down rain and he said that bring down bring bring back the close because it's going to rain and he had played that was a legend i think that says yeah. a lot about um yeah. the 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 legend that he was unfortunately we do not have any recordings of his and very uh, unfortunate. but very yeah. unfortunate but you were born in that family but also down the line perhaps there was a disconnection as well where all the things yes. that were there they could not be uh, fully yeah. transmitted and then it's through yeah. your own uh efforts and spending your time with your guru that you uh have reached wherever you have reached in life could you speak yeah. a little bit about that you first i want to thank you very much for no, 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 arranging no, this such a wonderful you know event because i am really i'm i'm very happy to you know to know all the stories and you know the experiences of uh, our friends uh and it's such a you know fantastic thing huh 
And uh, you know, and my warm greetings to all of you who are uh, watching our this event. Uh, as Shubhranil told that uh, I am from a good, uh, very, very, you know, good lineage, but there was some, you know, gap uh, from, uh, you know, Uttar Bhagavan Sutari's generation to our generation. But when uh, my grandfather came from Dhaka to uh, uh, Kolkata during partition time, you know, all family members, they were musicians, our uncles, our grandfather, my father, later my mother also, you know, so everybody is playing and, you know, singing. Uh, it's not only for, you know, like uh, professionally, it's kind of, it's a, it was like, you know, eating, sleeping like this in our family. So I am Fantastic really very much, yeah, yeah. And I am really, I, I, I always feel that I am very lucky and I'm, I'm grateful to Almighty that I have, I took birth in this family and such a wonderful world of music, you know, is uh, really, I, I, I thankful to God. So anyway, my uh, starting, you know, music starting, it was start from the mother's womb. My mother and father both are uh, vocalists and uh, I used to learn all the bandishes, ragas from my childhood. I didn't know that time. And I, I, I knew that it's a normal thing, you know, everybody, I, I thought that every, it's a, everybody can sing, everybody can do you like this. Uh, <laughs> later I understood that no, <laughs> they came to, you know, to learn or there was this discussion between the, uh, uh, the legends and other, other, many people actually followed, they came to our place. So my starting was like this and very beginning, I started with Sarod. I, I started learning Sarod from uh, Bengal's first uh, Sarod, Bengali Sarodist, Dhiran Bos son, Sunil Bos. I started from him, Sar Sarod. But unfortunately, there was some break and uh, we have to move uh, from our place to my maternal uncle's place. And I, my Sarod, I, I, I didn't proceed with well, my Sarod. Obviously, somebody yeah. Somebody told me very recently there is a lot of competition in the market. You should have gone back to Sarod. Why are you in Sita? <laughs> 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 no, anyway, uh, anyway, I, I yeah. yeah, it's a joke, but I was I, I worked at the Sita and Sarod faculty in Afghanistan National Institute of Music. So <laughs> there I, I tried to play some Sarod once again. <laughs> <laughs> um uh, that reminds me of to of something I wish to speak why you and me, we are both wearing a very similar kind of garment. So yes. uh, for our guests, for our uh, listeners, is this it, is a traditional Afghani um, kurta. This, and, it, it's and called it has, Yakhan. It's Yakhan. Yakhan. Yes. And this one has been gifted to me by my student Samir Ahmedi from um, wow. uh, Afghanistan. Obishek also knows yes. him. And, uh, yes. and uh, what has been happening um, in Afghanistan, some news have come up where um, mm. they're having very difficult difficulties you yeah. know, moving forward with music. And we as students of music, we are deeply moved by it. So this is a statement to say that we have Afghanistan, the musicians of Afghanistan in our heart. And uh, yeah. we wish that they can pursue music openly and with all respect because there's nothing like music uh, the, the, there's no nothing more beautiful than music. It can bring people, you. you know, like I have, I know about communities who, who, who actually came together because of music. And that is also exactly. the reason why we are all together. We are bound by yeah. music. Yeah. Maybe we have led yeah. a different life completely in many other ways, but we are bound by music. So all exactly. the prayers for the musicians of Afghanistan, may they prosper, yeah. may they perform freely yeah. may they express their music in front of everybody else sorry abhishek i i came i, yeah. I took no no yes, thank you so gone. much for your prayer we are also praying for them and they're lovely people so we will talk later about this absolutely so i'm not just going back to my childhood so my uh, my uh, music started with the sarod 
later I, I, I could not continue it. And um, uh, I started to learn, you know, vocal music from my mother. Uh, and I, I learned many bandishes and sargam. Uh, and later, you know, from my father also. Hmm. Uh, my father, you know, he always asked me, he, he, at that time we didn't have a uh, tape recorder or, or mobile phone with our, in our place. And we had a very good quality radio. And during the national program, or if somebody in you know, a good musician is singing or playing, he used to ask me, Beta Boob, tell me which rag this one, or which do you can you recognize or can you tell? So it was like this, you know. So I was wrong sometime. And he told, no, no, this, this is wrong, you know, it, 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 this is this rag because of this challenge, you know. So it was started like this. I, I have yeah, done many bandishes. Although I, later I, when I started sitar, I, I, I started with very tantrakari young baj with my hair style. I started uh, with uh, Shukma Chandraji, who was the senior disciple of Ravi Shankarji. During you know, Ravi Shankarji, when married uh, Annapurna Devi ji, he was that time there. I mean, he started, you know, very, very uh, early, you know, early, very early, you know. Mm -hmm. So even in my later, I started to learn from Pandit Deepak Chaudhuriji, and Deepak ji also used to call him Shukumarda, as he, he was senior. Huh. So that, uh, so it was a wonderful, you know, moment. Many musicians they came used to come to our place, and during the Saraswati Puja and other. Uh, occasion, you know, we used to go to our uh, uh, fathers and mothers' Ustad place, Pandit Biras Roy's place, there was Jalsa, and uh, True. we listened to all the uh, Pandits and Ustads there. Sometime also my father told that I play something besides Shabbat. the, you know, uh, Dunijan and to take blessings from them. And I, I played and, and then I, I, I surrendered, yes, Haziri and I, I I told that please tell me the, what what my you know fault and other things. So Shabbat. it was like this, you know. Later hand, uh, my brother also played tabla. I I have many lessons uh, from Pandit Deepak, uh, Pandit Kumar Bosji also. Shabbat. Omyum who was the senior most di disciple of Keramutullah Khan Sahab of Farukabad, and uh, we I. I learned so many stories about Panditji, Ahmed Jan Sikwa Khan Sahib, all the, you know, artists, Amir Khan Sahib, Bilayat Khan Sahib, all these things. So it was like a, you know, dream. I was in fantasy, still I am in fantasy. I am not in a normal, you know, <laughs> world. I always, there is some misad, man. I am not uh, in normal. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so it yeah, was I, like I this. understand what you mean about the feeling that somebody's taking care of you, that such wonderful exactly. things have happened. It's a positive feeling that takes us forward. Yes. Absolutely. I agree and yeah. I was very lucky that when my sitar guru, Shukmaji started with me, uh, along with the, you know, technical things, sapat, palta, we all have learned, huh? but he also used to tell me the mood of the raga. I, I clearly remember like, Miyaki Malla, that time I, I didn't know Miyaki Malla, but he played for me. He didn't teach yeah, me, but he showed that the Ganda should be like this. And he told the one, you know, the Ganda should be like the raindrop on the lotus leaf on the, you know, the pond. So the Ganda should be like this. So the mood and of the Shwat, the Uchar, about like, like many things. Huh? Also, the mood of the Rag, he always, when he started to teach me, he always started with the mood. First, he told me the mood of the raga and tried to make me understand. And then I used to start to practice this, you know, all these things. Later, you know, when a technical thing, I'm saying, the, when I'm, uh, like one example, I'm I'm practicing jhala. Right. So, Siddha Chhar Jhala, after like 15 minutes, 20 minutes, uh, my hand was so heavy, you know, and, and it's painful, I'm playing. So, but uh, Guruji told that, don't worry, you just carry on. 
later it will be like you know after few minutes you will feel that it will be like uh, uh, obos what is in english yeah, you, you go, yeah the feeling that it's yeah. numb that's what you're saying it's kind of numb so you kind and of like you get used to it yeah yeah and then it will be like you know like very lightweight like feather and that time you can practice if you want like two hours don't worry it will be fine uh, and after that you will you will have pain <laughs> so do practice so these all the steps he already told me and i i used to yeah. practice with my brothers all the day and night it was like this you know my grandmother she came she was like that time she was 75 years old and he used to come and he did the clapping oh she yeah, didn't have claps. teeth even uh, and she she also used to play sitar once upon the time and oh you are yeah, not in the life you are not in the yeah, life you know <laughs> So yeah, it but. was like this, you know. Uh, so what you mean? Is, yeah. What well, what you mean is that all throughout the process of learning, you have been rectified by people who really care for you. That's what you are yes. saying, and that yes. made a difference in your it. understanding of music and playing. That's what the point yes. is all about. That is such an important uh, thing that you spoke about. And, and Shubhra, you know, Subranil, uh, I yes, got oh, opportunity sorry. to. I got opportunity yeah, Ram, to Ram, play. Ram. I got opportunity to, uh, you know, perform and practice with his elder brother Sanjay Da, who is a fantastic human being and fantastic tabla player. And Thank you I, so much. I I got opportunity to perform for their annual concert when you both were in Afghanistan that time. With Sanjay ah, we, and I got we, blessings we, blessings from your parents. Also. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much. You played wonderful darbari there. I I clearly yeah. remember. He missed the concert. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So we had that video. So thank you so much, Ram Bhai. And you know, uh, although I am from Maina Senia Ghana, the mute. If, if mute. all of you could put the microphone off, I think it will be easier for. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. So although I am from Senia Maina Ghana, but you know, I have learned many things from Kirana, the vocal, really vocal from Kirana. My, uh, uh, you know, father's first ustad, I mean the guru, he was Pandit Pony uh, Bhushan Sen. Uh, he was disciple of Balaram Roy, Pandit Balaram Roy of Rangila Gharana. And he used to come and he asked, uh, tell this raga one, you know, and, and he started to, you know, ask different phrases and ask me which raga this one. I was small, you know, I, uh, how I will know. <laughs> but true, true. Peculiar, you know, he was very, you know, old, old age that time. Mm. Yeah. So, do, do you do the same with your students? Do you? Ask yes, I always ask to. Yes, I ask to. You know, listen the. I ask to listen the all the solo musicians, for you True. know, because in that time our you know you also we are in the same age. So, but I I didn't have you know internet that time. So I I didn't uh, listen much. You know, I just face to face and some record later hand the cassette I got and I used to play and I listen. Maximum was the Pandit Ravi Shankar Ji, Ali Ayur Khan Sahib, later hand Dusar Bilayat Khan Sahib, uh, and, and uh, all others. Uh, I listen. Mm -hmm. I, I, I went to Ustad Usharanjan Mukhubadda's place with my mother. He used to, you know, learn from him also, from Kinara. He was the senior most disciple of Ustad Amir Khan Sahib. Uh, so, all the, you know, the great musicians. Beautiful. Uh, they, I think yeah. what you, what you yeah. said, um, speaks so much about a wonderful association that you have had over the years. Uh, I think Shubhra, may, is, I take this, yeah, may, may I take this opportunity yeah, yeah, uh, yes, to address please. a very poignant question asked by one of, uh, by another very talented sitarist of our generation, Oyun Shankupto. I mean, we have to, yes, yes, uh, yeah. we know uh, sure. Indra Mojumdar was watching us, Shakir Bhai was watching us, they have also yeah, commented now. Um, yeah, that's so uh, lovely. to the Thank discussion you. that we're having right now. His question is, may I raise a question? Please put your opinion. Tell me about the proportionate blending of Gayaki and Tantra Kari Yang. Yes. Perfect. Okay, Obishek. So, it's to me or any? I yeah, just... Let, I let, let, to, okay. Let, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, I think Oyan it's part of the discussion. If you know Gayaki Yang, Gayaki Yang, uh, yeah. what a new colon. Uh, so Gaikyang, you know, uh, we actually most probably oh, we all play Gaikyang. Sorry, uh, but you know, some is Drupadang, some is Kyalang or Thungviang, but somehow we are related with your uh, Gaiki style. Mm. 
Yeah. Right, but the question was yeah. more like uh, he Ayun is asking um, mm -hmm. how the, the, all of you have learned in different um, styles, perhaps, and listened yeah. to different artists. How did you uh, blend them together? That was the more important question, I think. So, no, you know, how, how, how did you how, how did you approach be... your own music and blend Gaiki and Tantrakari? One thing, you know, when you have proper guru and when a guru is, you know, trying to make you efficient or he has, you know, all the power mental, that time already you have the structure of your own, you know, I mean, from your uh, guru's parampara, already you have. Hmm. And then that, that time will come when you will have all the knowledge and, and the styles from others. Other Ustad and Anand. This is the most important thing which will enrich our music later. And that's why in same Gharana even the all the musicians are a bit different. Absolutely. Absolutely. They have their, they have their own uh, feelings. They have True. Same, although Absolutely. they have same same, you know, composition, same uh, I mean the practices and all the, they did same thing, but they have some different also because they are different person, their character is different, their mood is different. And also some people, all they follow somehow, you know, in some extent, some special musicians and they reflect on their music. So for vocal music like me, I have had so many, you know, uh, ragas and uh, beautiful compositions of Ustad Amit Khan Sahib and also Ustad Baramula Gulamali Khan Sahib, myself, because I love. And also uh, from... Uh, Pandit Bhimshan Joshi ji. So, so it when so you I'm have playing, incorporated all yeah, those ideas yeah, when, when in your I'm own way that touches from, your own yeah, sensibilities. Yeah, that means when I'm playing something which I have already learned from my gurus, but somehow when I'm playing some some certain note or some uchar, it may come, you know, it may come. So it's, and our okay, so if I allowed me, then it, yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if it's, it's uh, like because it's like. It's like a uh, flower of the head, you know, garden. Sure, yeah. go on, go on, go on, please. So, yeah, sorry. so it, 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 it's like a beautiful garden, and he told that there is many flowers in the garden. True, so very true. Very beautiful, true. The, the essence and the color is a very, you know, unique for true. each one. So, but so, but it, that, that's, yeah. that's the point. There are beautiful flowers, but not every color goes with every color. So it needs a musician to know which are the colors that you can bring together and create a vocal with that. Otherwise, it might that, not be having that beauty that we are so used to, right? So that's what you're talking about. That's beautifully yeah, that's said. Why, that's why you need, you need the guide. Which Absolutely. One we should, that means we have a, all the freedom, but we are in, in certain boundary also there. True, so, true, true. Absolutely. No. That is absolute, it I think, up. Yeah. True. I think when Oyun is asking, I'm sure he is asking, understanding what you have already said. Mainly he was asking in which way you are fused. So let's take this question and uh, let's, uh, Shaman Navai has raised his arm for quite some time. I could not um, uh, get back to him at that time. Shaman Navai, uh, why not answer this question? How did you fuse yeah. Tantra uh, and Daiki together? Yes, yes, yes. It, it's a very valid question and very important Absolutely. question Oyun has raised, right? So how uh, do you blend uh, Gayaki and Tantra Gari? Right? The, the you know, tip I got from my Guruji Pandit Manilal Nag when I was very, you know, in, at tender age, right? He told my father that make him listen more vocal stuff, more vocal renditions. At the same time, made him practice all the technical things like Palta, Sapat, Gamak and all these things. So at the very tender age, if those expressions of vocal music is getting imbibed into your subconscious, right? And at the same time, you're technically making your uh, skills perfect. So at, yes. at a point, it's going to see, he used to say that whenever we express or whenever we express to our instruments, we sing first. Absolutely. First we sing, then we play, right? And this Tantrakari Ang is a pretty much characteristics of the instrument itself. Absolutely. Right. The, how the few ornamentations, few elements which could be played on Sita so well is not for Sarod or Rabab. Absolutely. And few things uh, is being played in Rabab or, uh, you know, Sarod or Udravina is not 
maybe equally not you know competent for sitar also so that True. tandragadi part is quite you know um, the characteristics itself of the instrument True. now you can you are developing yeah, those on. yes please 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 yes. uh, i it reminds me of something that uh, ustad vilat khan sir had said he said that surbahar ko surbahar ke jaisa bajao सुरसिंगार में सुरसिंगार बजाओ रबाब में रबाब बजाओ उसके बाद गाय क्या करना आई थिंक वॉट ही सेड वॉज दैट फर्स्ट प्ले फर्स्ट लर्न द बाज दैट गोज वेरी वेल इन इन दैट इंस्ट्रूमेंट बिकॉज इन पियानो यू कैन नॉट डू मीन एज सिंपल इज दैट सो देर इज अ बाज फॉर पियानो देर इज अ बाज फॉर हारमोनियम देर इज अ बाज फॉर सारेंगी एज वेल सारेंगी कैन डू इनक्रेडिबल काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स विच आर ऑलमोस्ट इम्पॉसिबल फॉर दिस सो टू मेक Uh, the music complete on your instrument you need to learn the ways of the instrument and where the instrument sounds beautiful and and yeah. we should be learning that but then yeah. after that you explore you explore exactly. and bring if you if you love you bring thumriang if you love right. uh, khayalang bring khayalang if you love uh, dhrupadang bring kh- dhrupadang so the, i just wanted to add yes please yeah end back. of the day see end of the day if you wish to you know play any rag whatever any rag like if you wish to play nand you have to think that way sa ga ma pa da ni pa da ma pa ga ma da pa it same on every every instrument right yeah and uh, as uh, per guruji's advice i grew up uh, listening to e wa da wa da se So, yeah. so if you, you know, if you listen to Vilad Khan Sahab, either Vilad Khan Sahab or Bismillah Khan Sahab, right? Or even Ravi Shankar Ji, that gama da, maybe the expressions are different, true, right? But the phrases are the same. Absolutely, absolutely. Right? That's why absolutely. it's very much. I mean, to me now, I uh, that little understanding what I have that listening to vocal music is very important. For all absolutely no doubt. they wish to imbibe the expressions of gayaki into true. their playing true true right then so, then i think then you you don't need to think how to blend it it gets automatically blended so you are saying about a creation that is happening inside you in a subconscious way but not a fusion of ideas that you are doing in an intellectual way that's what you are mainly pointing right. out right right okay. i mean so yeah when we talk right when we talk we we'll listen to everybody when we learn to talk how to talk right in at very childhood when a child speaks right he or she is listening to everybody but when he or she speaks it's his or her own expression right so when you are learning or you are listening to something and it, when it should come out it should come out with its own expression Absolutely. I mean that's the thing. That's the you know that's the difference between what we you told earlier the copying and following. True, true. Right? So that that, that that yeah that's I think that's going, the suitable way to me. Absolutely, I think what my ustad has to say about this is very important because he says and which is very true and to the point. He says that every person is different mm-hmm. and. whatever you learn even from the same guru when it comes out of you it will be different it cannot be it should. It a, a should. copy of somebody else although mm-hmm. i have to say for um of course the people who have learned from um the right people uh, they of course know but those people uh, who are students and are listening to us i would say that um, you know copying has its own space because copying rectifies our ears that means mm-hmm. a person who hears portuguese like uh, um, tutubian you know something like that tutuban you know like that when they will be speaking the brazilian portuguese that's not going to be the same as bangla and when we speak it might not be the same as a portuguese uh, speaking so to speak portuguese in the way that it should be said you have to be copying exactly that means you have to be a better listener so copying is important but mm-hmm. how long mm-hmm. are you going to copy you right how long right. are you going to dependent on somebody else's music when you right. have a feeling inside why not express that that's what my ustad said and it's a beautiful thing i think so um 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 uh, obishek 
could you could you say something about this obhishek mollik yes yeah i think uh, this makes our job uh, much more difficult uh, although we say that vocal tradition is the highest form of music but this is what i have experienced as instrumentalists we have to know both the vocal tradition as well as the understand the character of our instrument so uh, on one hand we are uh, we have this tendency to be carried away by the vocal nuances but at the same time we have to respect uh, what our instrument has to say like krimtan vocal it cannot be expressed in vocal music it's a it's a it's a it's a, it's a integral part of sitar sarod and like instrumental music that the character of the, of the instrument exactly. itself what i say character of the exactly. character of the yeah, instrument yeah the different thing yeah exactly so that balance one has to realize i mean i mean uh, uh, i mean if we look at all the great artists they have always been successful in striking this balance like the way they have incorporated the vocal and the tantrakari part i mean it it goes hand in hand it goes hand in hand you cannot uh, just play uh, uh, instrumental things continuously on an instrument you have to have vocal elements and then for that you need to learn the vocal part and at the same time you have to restrict yourself i mean like it cannot be an out and out vocal performance on an instrument you have to respect the instrumental characters as well so otherwise you run the risk of trying to sound like something else that you're not so exactly. you might be exactly. using technique which is advanced but it might not be bringing out the beauty of your instrument so that's what you're perhaps exactly. speaking about yeah exactly. back beautifully said um uh, who else wishes to speak about it that that could add to this topic if you could raise your hand then who else would want to speak about this topic okay deep please please deep go on I think uh, uh, apart from these points uh, of tantrakari and gayaki, uh, Dada Ji also said one thing. Uh, I asked uh, this question to him. He told me that uh, it also depends on which raga you are playing. You know the essence of the raga. It's like uh, I can play create so many printans in Zila Kapi, Sindh Bhairavi, but uh, that that amount of printan. I'm just uh, giving an example. That amount of printan. Might not suit in Malcons or Bagishri. Very valid. Right. Very so, valid. So I think uh, uh, first of all, you have to understand. You have to own that raga inside you. That. Uh, oh, just that a second. Raga? Just a second. Sorry. I'll. I'll. Could you? So, the, somebody's microphone is on, and there is a sound of the phone. If you could uh, put all the microphones off, then Deep can speak freely. The the speed. Yeah. I mean, sound is coming. Obishay, Odikari, I think your microphone is on. Unknown. Uh, yeah, it's gone. It's it's good now. Yeah. Okay. Deep. Sorry. I I, I have think. To, yeah. uh, so I think this is a major part. Uh, this this is gives this is a major role to play. That which raga we are playing, and uh, actually this printan or the tantrakari thing is uh, that it's going with the raga or not, right? So just just for to say that I can play uh, tantrakari or I have uh, so much uh, complex techniques, so I have to show it to the audience. so you might kill the raga so first of all i think uh, we have to be musician rather than the technician first kya yeah, yeah, baat hai proportion beautiful is that yeah, this yeah. is a very valid point huh? this is a very important point that proportion absolutely. how much absolutely the element should be in its place right that's absolutely. why we strike the right balance what Th that, 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 that that's right that that was what the question was from oyon and it's a beautiful question oyon really really nice and uh, thanks to indrayud for tuning in thanks to shakir so nice all of you guys are over here because uh, it makes our conversation even more interesting and it feels like we are spending um, you know a, a quality time because you know uh, we would want all of you to be a part of this and uh, the whole aim of this endeavor is to create a space where we can talk about music because remember our childhood there was a time when the super fantastic musicians of today whom we look up and say wow you know like our legends they used to practice together they used to practice with each other they used to hang out with each other 10 12 people just playing music together and discussing about rag and tal so much synthesis of idea could happen so much uh, exchange of ideas could happen so it's such a beautiful it's it's a it's such an honor to have all our guests over here 
to to be a part of this. Thank you so much, mm, uh, Ram. Sorry, in the middle, I I um, uh, I had to say, speak about it. So, Ram, uh, what is your take on on this? Would you want to talk about this or um, what? I think uh, we have uh, enough discussion on this topic. I think we can go to the next topic. But the context, what was discussed, is the context is very important. When, how, and what. What we are True. doing, when we are doing, and how we are doing in Peru, True. as uh, you, as you were saying during our yeah. ICMC conversation in Peru, if we do all the gamaks, and in Darwari and Mar Marwa, if exactly. we do ek ek tehai dhati da dhati da dhati da, <laughs> so the the, rag, the mood of the rag will be get spoiled. So it is very important. In Alap, if we do lot of printan, instead if we do the during the tan jor. So that that gives proper balance when we are doing gaik so, and what time, and it is it is cool. you know. Uh, it goes uh, in subconscious. It is not like now I am doing Daiki, now I am shifting to Tantrakari. All these things together work as a whole, as a final true. product and beautiful product. Yeah, Absolutely. Absolutely. That is so true what you said. And uh, um, it was a fantastic session where um, I feel my Ustaji spoke about quite a few interesting things. And uh, my own experience of being with him is that. Uh, uh, he's quite reserved from the outside, but if you get to know him as a person, he, he, you know, you'll be forgetting about time, that kind of a feeling. Time moves on, moves by, and uh, he has so much to uh, share. And I've heard incredible stories about learning from him. And um, one of those stories, two of those stories, he said about one where uh, Khan Sahib, Bilak Khan Sahib was sitting uh, in his um, house and then somebody had come, very unknown. And but Khan Sahib gave a lot of respect and made him sit and chai and every kind of things uh, for him uh, were, were, were brought. And then he said like, please, you know, share something. And there was a bandish that Khan Sahib, Bilak Khan Sahib didn't know and he said, hey, hold on a second, let me write it down. I think that is what learning is all about, right? Like it doesn't matter how great and to what extent you have reached, there's always something that could be learned. And I think this is the reason why we had said in our promo video that we are aspiring musicians. For us, musicians are like Ustad Barigulam Ali Khan Sahib, Ustad Amir Khan Sahib, Pandit Malik Arjun Mansur Ji, you know, like all these great luminaries, right? So I feel um, staying a student and being very uh, honest to your own progress in music helps any person to move forward. So uh, what you said about assimilation perhaps comes when somebody is fine-tuned to realize what that person can uh, is feeling inside what for that person wants to express and whether that person has the technique to express that. So it's such a complex thing. I think forever being a student is the only way to Sudhanil, achieve. Bhai, yeah, just sure, you know, our first Ram. point and second, our first point and second point are very much related. The guru True. Shakti or Guru instinct. At some point, True. we have to develop the Guru instinct within ourselves just to understand what to do and what not to do. True. At some point, the work of real Guru is to uh, you know, incorporate that seed within a student, that guru Absolutely. instinct within. True. So that that guiding light, that guru shakti, actually helps the student throughout the musical musical. Kya baat hai? Kya baat hai? It's music, musical intelligence you're talking about. That's beautiful. That's a very important topic. So it brings us to this juncture where uh, we have talked about riyas and assimilation and all these things. But do you think? Talim, a good mahol uh, atmosphere, and uh, riyas. These are the only three things that are needed to survive as a musician in this present world. So my question would be for Abhishek, Abhishek Mulli. So Abhishek, um, could, you, could you speak about this? Before I do that, a, a wonderful question just um, uh, surfaced. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, a guy called Shubhadeep, he has a question that, uh, he, has, he has a question. What does it mean 
by characteristics of a gharana of sitar does it only depend on gayaki or tantrakari if not what are the other parameters in your view and okay. they were pure that so who would so, want to answer that i i put it forward for you guys uh, who would want to answer obigda would you like to answer please yeah uh well um what uh, can you repeat the question again please Uh, yeah, yeah. Abhishek. 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 Yeah. yeah Abhishek. Yeah. question is uh, what does it mean by characteristics of a gharana of sitar does it only depend on gayaki or tantrakari if not what are the other parameters in your view okay uh, so a gharana um, as uh, we were discussing it doesn't uh, mean or have to have either gayaki or tantrakari it might have both and it depends on the artist who is imbibing what his knack is there for you know if he loves tantrakari he can work into tantrakari if he works uh, if he loves mm-hmm. gaiki he can follow gaiki but that does not the, that's not the matter you are painting a picture in a canvas and the colors is what it matters and the end product is what it matters not the you know what ingredients you used it could be a mixed um, you know like a mixed media it could be just acrylic whatever it is but it it depends on whatever um stuff you have imbibed through different gurus or friends and talking to people everything comes into play on that particular canvas which is your performance so not Kabari. only that gharana it's just a painting that's end product is most important what are you doing with it whether it has survived the test of time or not i think that's uh, what i want to say kya baat hai obigda so that okay. that brings me to uh, um, to murchana because murchana has learned in uh, jaipur senia gharana jaipur um, uh, and then uh, seni maihar gharana as well and uh, she has spent a lot of time with a few other maestros as well shahjanpur gharana and so uh, you know this question might be uh, very important for you to answer so murchana if you could Very yeah, interesting start. and a valuable question. Um, I like the way Avigda said, "Huh, he's absolutely right. Huh, it's like a painting. Actually, the end matter is what we do. You know, the gharana is important really when we are having the talim from a guru. It's really necessary that we follow a particular style in the beginning because it is necessary to have the basic things intact in our playing." It's really required, but when we grow up as musicians, although that will really matter what we are we have learned in the very beginning, but later on our own thoughts, our own feelings, and as a person, our character will reflect in that playing. No? Absolutely. And uh, yeah, then uh, you know if we receive uh, like when we were in university, usually in university what had happens that. Um, the the gurus or the teachers are uh, they follow a particular uh, curriculum they teach they do you do these things you come back you do these things you come back but we were fortunate mm-hmm. to have mistros and teachers like uh, pandit deepak choudhury ji he was in the university he was a disciple of pandit ravi shankar ji uh, a prominent disciple he belonged to a particular gharana a great master so we had the fortune to learn from him i was really A fortunate to have his talim. Although I was in university, but I didn't feel like I was in the university uh, learning these things. Yeah, you were also so, there. <laughs> yeah, of course I was there, but may, mostly in the canteen. But I had a wonderful time with um, uh, all of you, <laughs> if you remember. So anyway, so uh, I mean, I so, love the canteen because it was a very vibrant place at the university. But let me let me add something over there. Um, I have. this wonderful memory of deepak ji addressing this issue in a very wonderful way yeah. so there was this workshop that had happened at my place where my ustad had played uh, meg uh, meg malar and uh, ramdasi malar and uh, sur malar and uh, i i i had actually taken that uh, video uh, you know to the to the um, computer room and then the computer room was in in ravindra bharati where you were there all yeah, of us yeah. were there mm-hmm. uh, yeah. it, it it's in not really a room right it's it's a it's just a partition which divides a room into 70 yeah. 30 yeah, yeah. you know 30 is the and um, all computer room and 70 is the 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So whatever All happens in the computer room goes into the um, teacher's room. room as well. You know, the staff yeah. room as well. So. Yeah. Um, and we were listening and all of us, I think Sharojit was also there and all of us were listening. And then after that, you all went and asked Pandit Dipak Chaudhary ji, like, you know, Guruji, let's uh, go for the class. And he said, very interesting. He said that you, you didn't understand. Your class is done. Whatever you listened, yes. go back and think about that. That is the class. What yeah. else do you want to meet? It's not about the class exactly. which matters. What you take right. from hearing right. that matters. It's such a beautiful thing he said, and it's a super um, incredible. Actually, this uh, thing. journey is very important. True. The end doesn't okay. matter. <laughs> True. And the journey True. is really uh, important. So uh, oh, I think um, Shamanna Bhai and uh, Ram both have raised their hands. So Shamanna Bhai, please go on. You have this fantastic thing that uh, Ashwini ji had said. I wish to. Hear yes, yes, yeah, that was yes. that was I was just about to mention because yes, on Gharana, if you go to the basic. Yeah, why these gharanas evolved? Yeah, if you see the history of uh, Indian classical music, uh, before certain era, there was there is no mention about gharanas, right? Exactly. Yeah. So True, basically, the yeah the basically the idea was to uh, find the gharanas was when this music went to the courts of the maharajas and the nawabs and the badshahs, right? Then there used to be very much, you know, competitive, you know, challenges between states also in all aspects. So the Nawab well, they had, and Maharajas. Well, they, they had, uh, sorry, well, they had the silence in life. They had the beautiful air. They had the beautiful yes. bees and the trees. Yes. So I think yes. it was yes. nice yes. for yes. them yes. to have this kind of thing. Now, yes. Yes. perhaps it's a different right. zone. Or right, right. Yeah, please go on. So please. That, was, that was one thing. And you know, see those days the competition was also was so healthy, right? Absolutely. They used to uh, they used to you know appoint or you know patronage musicians to find a uh, you know. So that's how it came from Gwalior or Agra or Jaipur or whatever, right? All these gharanas evolved from the darbar basically. Absolutely. And. From uh, Senia, Senia Gharana, you need to travel all the way to Ra either Rampur or you know to uh, Banaras or closest part of that area, right? From suppose you are going from Bangla, Bengal, or you are coming from the state of Maharashtra. So those days, due to this I mean, lack of communication, it, it would take I mean months to travel across the country, right? So these Gharanas, these uh, these I think I think at the same time you see the Senia and the you know. Uh, Itawa Imbat Thani Gharana, right? At the same time, bisecting these two such that Zafar Khani Bhags came out, right? And True. totally, totally different. The same True. thing is being played, right? The Krintan, the Sapat, the Mean, and all these things. True. But the expression is so different, right? True. So in Absolutely. our generation, is in our generation, what the question being read? The, we are the most fortunate ones that we uh, in the in this uh, digital era we can get everything listed with a single click, right? Oh, that true. makes it true. very easy. Though that's not the way to learn. Learning true. and oral tradition is told is something different. But true. once you learn in certain gharana or certain school or style for the certain period of time. Right? Then you have these days, you have this lenience and you have this opportunity, right? To imbibe things from other gharanas, to learn from other gharanas, because Itawa gharana, uh, you know, the, the uh, Taj Bharat is traveling all across the country. Or the Senia gharana Taj Bharat is traveling all across the world. So it's so easier these days to learn. Yeah, one fantastic, uh, what you what you were mentioning, one fantastic, uh, you know, quote, uh, Ashwini ji, Vidushi Ashwini Vidhi ji given in a face to me, then uh, she was been asked that uh, why you are mixing things and uh, you are mixing it so, you know, uh, you are blending rather than mixing is a better word is blending things in a such, you know, beautiful and delicate manner and but what's the need of it? Because you belong to certain gharana and you're mixing and blending things from other gharanas, is there any need? Then she, uh, what she answered, uh, answered is a brilliant, uh, fantastic answer she gave. 
he told that see my gharana is my foundation not my limitation kya baat beautiful right beautiful so these days the you know we are the uh, again i say we are the fortunate ones who has true these opportunity because in in our childhood also i will uh, certainly i am sure you all will agree me ram obhishek mallik so far i remember faces right we uh, uh, attended enormous number of you know workshops done by different you know solvers like ustad amjad ali khan ustad buddhadev dasgupta ji pandit buddhadev dasgupta ji right True. and lot other people of sitar sarod and all True. so this uh, opportunity we had we True. have so far and these days you know whether a workshop being conducted and you give a click and you can straight away uh, listen to the stalwart the maestro or the ustad or pandit True. speaking on your True. screen right so that that brings us to uh, although uh, abhishek odhikari and ram prapanna have both raised I their will, hands i, I, I will, I'll I will come back to quickly cover just two three points subro nil yes, i will sir. not take yes. less than couple of minutes just to yes, answer sure, uh, shubhadeep's question very specifically uh, um, thanks to all of you who have already covered the background and history of gharana what are the characteristics which differentiates one gharana from another the concept of instrumental gharana is comparatively new than you know vocal gharanas so for vocal gharanas the distinguishing factors were uh, like the akar or the tonal quality or tonal modulation some gharana prefers in a open a some gharana you know emphasizes on e kar so all these tonal modulation and tonal uh, you know volume uh, volume variation all these things this is the first quality second thing is the predominance of rasa bhav so one gharana can have multiple ras Uh, among the navaras but predominance like agra we see more viras in kirana we see more bhaktiras then so but, but that, that's you know i want to add something over there uh, baregulavali khan sahab is known as you know like that honey like voice and incredible uh, range and incredible you know uh, ways of saying things right um, but then he sang marwa in viras whereas so that is his, uh, that is his versatility that is his versatility I, I know. what what i meant to say is that uh, if we say that one gharana is only about one ras more then we might be also Predomin um, predominance of rasa bhav i am saying it might have many rasas it will have many rasas but predominance of certain rasas i am saying right then right. the sahitya in the bandis or the types of bandis which are being executed the tan ans exactly. and prakars the content in vistar and the way of execution some uh, gharana prefers in the swara vistar the step by note by note approach some gharana goes in a different way True. choice of raags True. choice of tals all these things differentiates one gharana from another True. so so these are the these are the bullet so points. you mean to say about the music yeah, execution think. part of it you you are you mainly talk more about the music execution Manner. so Manner. subodeep i would want to yeah. add something over here i think a very important thing about a gharana is um as ashwini ji had said it's about the foundation because often the techniques that are taught they might not be exactly the same as it's taught in some other family or in another lineage so gharana is important for learning but if you think about it as a very water type rigid thing then let me give you some examples of uh, my ustad he belongs to the itava gharana he belongs from the lineage yet he plays tishri rupak which has been popularized which has been uh, brought into place by pandit devishan pochi he plays jogeshwari yeah. he plays parameshwari and uh, uh, many other varas he thought yeah. music uh, he has always thought my ustad has always thought that music doesn't have boundaries but i have to say something shubhadeep just to answer your question you need to know where you belong when ashwini ji is saying something when my ustad is saying something they have reached a level of virtuosity from where they can approach anything in such a way that they can they can absorb many things and make it a part of themselves because they they have walked a long way so somebody is starting can i add out. just one yeah, statement please. sorry uh, shubhani shubhani shubhan 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 yeah just i just would like to add one statement you know once you know uh, pandit jayant bose ji what a beautiful thing about this gharana right he said ever that himalaya has seven peaks right it has seven peaks seven peaks but if you can climb one 
you can see six others kya baat hai beautifully said but that climbing one is your taleem and foundation in one gharana kya baat hai and yeah, that's the added thing with the rest of the six right true 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 yeah shorojit sure. what do you, do you have anything exactly. to add to it or would you want to say something about this because you have also yeah. you know yes yes uh, as per my knowledge the gharana has a different each gharana has a different already has already uh, we have discussed gharana is our foundation and uh, that is very beautifully said by uh, acharya jayantoshi has mentioned by someone that uh, if we uh, climb one peak we can see the other peaks but uh, every every gharana has a different essence have different kind of uh, practice different kind of choice of rag tal approach of bandish approach of bol vistars approach of the the ornamental things some gharana True. in, in True. instrumental gharanas we also have the the, the characteristics the some features but nowadays we we all know in ancient age there was a, a huge gap of communication but nowadays there is no gap so we all know uh, which is good amongst other gharanas so we we everybody try to amalgamate our uh, everybody's beautiful points and trim by bit according to our musicality our musical sense so i think yes how if i can put a question for also vishay godikari and ram prabhupada yeah. as well as shorojit as well uh, how you know you remember uh, shukumar rai's poetry we know about has jharu as well okay. uh, which yes, is yes. half this half that and half that so how can you uh, bring all these elements that you like or you have absorbed and how do you make it into one so if i ask that yes. question what might be the answer shorojit that But is that is called go with, mil- hold on shorojit i'll just because uh, obishek odhikari has raised his arm uh, i mean his hand later, uh, later. virtual hand for quite some time so uh, <laughs> please virtually say something obishek odhikari please first oh, then shorojit okay 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 so has jaru according to your that is true this is the you know but, uh, my point is how not to be a has jaru that means how not to be half this half that yeah, i mean that finish that that is, but one third this foundation. one third that one third that. Yeah. yeah that is our foundation our our gharana you know which we have learned from our ustad or you know the techniques and other all these things the technique gharana you know previously when there was not the gharana was not said as a gharana there was certain you know the musical elements especially Absolutely. elements Absolutely. for the sita it was Absolutely. mainly two parts one is you know roba bang and another is binang true before you know before tantrakari and gaiki some you know ustads there were only four five ustads that time in the you know in the, in the 18th century medieval of 18th century or 19th early a 19th century the style was roba style or binang rudra binang style Huh. so in rubab time there was a right hand work was more important the bowls and other and and for rudrabina style there was the this you know the left hand work was with, uh, very important mainly but but in the same time it was a balance you know is is not sure. like this the who is playing rubab and he is not playing me this is not like sure. this sure. but the very important Arana, question, you know uh, yes he, the you know it, it derived from that later hand so, when the gharana created they took the element from these two you know two schools you can say these two styles uh-huh. and later for each gharana we have same ornament because the khatka muti for sitar i'm saying i'm true. not going to others so uh, yeah. sitar you know for jam jama khatka murti gamak meet other uh, also the ans uh, Also, uh, technically, it's what the you know the us use for something. But we now we we know that we can play us even in our sita to you true, know, sustain true. the raga. True. So, so what we are we are uh, that, looking at is yes. yeah. Go on, please. Yes. Uh, sorry, but, I know, I have to I have to has... I hold on. I have hmm. to um, apologize because um, uh, yes, I mean I think a lot of people are watching as well. So um, I wouldn't want. Um, 
I mean, this is our first episode. We are going to do many episodes as well. So uh, we should be answering all the questions. And it's such a huge topic. And there are 11 of us. <laughs> and often like we are not able to say um, all the things that we uh, would want to say. But le- let's, le- let's uh, take the idea from what you had said. And if you could finish what you had said, and then we take it into, because a very important question yeah. has come to my mind that I'll ask. Yeah. The last I will take just one two minutes more. Sure, sure. Please. Like for the Gharana for sitar, the the techniques. I mean, when a, a khatka is is a different for each Gharana. When a Itova style or when a Maiha style or some other styles also, they will play hmm. the same same thing, but the style, the pause between the you know the swars, the timing, and also there is some some you know some different essence which we, we got from our ustad is different and it is it it, 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 it uh, do that you know uh, uh, you know it does the you know the very the very bad variation i mean true, true. we are the, talking the, about the aroma of the you know as they say khushbu right you yes, know that you this, say. you know, in olden days, nobody mentioned the raga, nobody mentioned the tal, nobody mentioned which guru, which garana. The audience yeah. could know exactly. by the first chikari, second chikari, few phrases. Okay, he's from this and this lineage and this ustads uh, or that with the style only student. La- with, yes. with the style, like the playing style, like only. you know. So, exactly. for example, well said. So, for example, yeah. Obishek, um, yeah, please. It was a different age where the people who are listening to you were also learned. They used to know what you are doing. Now, if you do Puri and Marwa and Soini, nobody's going to even know what is the difference. Between. There, there are people like that. I don't mean to say everybody, nobody. The nobody is not like the nobody, like every person in the world. I mean to say, now the people that we perform for, there are people who won't be understanding those kind of differences. So how do uh, how are we contributing to create an audience? Frankly speaking, the audience that we perform for have been created by the likes of Pandit Ravi Shankarji, Ustad Vilat Khan Sahib, Pandit Nikhil Banerjee Ji, Ustad yeah. Raiz Khan Sahib, you know, all, the, all these uh, great instrumentalists, uh, Ustad Halim Jafar Khan Sahib. So uh, what are we doing all around the world and in, in our own ways? For example, uh, some of you are working in schools. Some of you are uh, freelancers who go worldwide and do concerts. So how are you doing something for the scene? What, what are the ways of uh, incorporating the essence, the khushbu that you were saying of raga music uh, into people who never had the chance uh, to experience the environment that we had experienced in our lives as, as children? So that question goes out for um, Ovigda. Ovigda, you, you stay in um, uh, US, and if you have finished your painting while I was no, I'm not making painting, a very I'm just taking long question. <laughs> so, I know, Ovigda, Ovigda so you... is a beautiful painter. I love uh, that, your painting, as well as he is a great musician. I mean, Sita Thayer. But really, Ovigda, uh, I love your uh, painting also. Uh, well, so that I, was actually, I was not painting. Concert. I was just writing the point. You know? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So anyway, please go anyway, on. Yeah, so you, you yeah, stay yeah. in US mostly, and also, of course, in India. Uh, but you mm. mainly stay in uh, live in US. So, uh, what what are the things that you are doing to to do something to create that kind of understanding within the people who are interested, and what kind of people yeah. come to you? The good part, as you have said. Uh, that has already been done by the legends of Indian music here. So, you know, it's already there's some artists who come here and the listeners who come here to listen to already knows what they're expecting. Rarely it happens that uh, people come out and uh, say, uh, like, uh, what's like the difference between Marwa and Puriya? And I, the, they, they can ask questions in workshop like that there it's still there you know because it can be heard the difference can be heard very properly but the thing is audience has is their own um, representation and, um, and 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 their own ideas and they they're uh, really intelligent so they can uh, like in a dance expression in a dance recital if you do some um, mudras you know people understand what is happening anyone layman can understand so the point is um, there can be uh, two 
parts of this topic. Um, one is once you are understanding what uh, you are going to play and uh, developing your music. You know, sometimes people, uh, I I like uh, like a cinematic development of a music. You know, like it's a um, uh, mm -hmm. that expression-wise movements and uh, like it's a whole uh, cinematic conversations going on and this sort of pictures in mind. If you start playing, people get it. People get it, and there's not very much to explain there. But if I have to explain. Um, I would rather say that since it's an art and it's a very perspective-based art, like uh, uh, plays I love, uh, and there are lots of plays whom other people love, and it's there's no, it's it's the way we are viewing the art. So audience uh, have that, so I don't uh, pressurize anyone to you know. So this is the way, and no, because there are not one single answer like mathematics in art. There, all answers are correct if they are expressing that uh, expressions are expressing, expressing it properly or telling the tale properly. You know, that's how I feel like. Right, right, fantastic. Rohan, um, um, I, I'll ask the same question to you because you have, I know, because of our association, um, I know that you have done substantial work in um, some parts of uh, Europe where you have done uh, a very similar kind of Thing, uh, as perhaps pioneers of this music have done, and uh, to to initiate a few people who are perhaps younger and never been in touch with Indian classical music as such, or never heard the legends as well, but mm -hmm. came to your concert or somewhere and 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 they got interested. So you have done some work in uh, several parts of Europe. So. What are your experiences? What what kind of people mainly come to you? After that, I'll come to Shorujit. And uh, uh, I have to say to everybody, I mean, uh, I know it's a huge topic and it's taking a lot of time. Hopefully it's engaging for people. Um, uh, um, uh, so um, it's engaging all the people who are listening. But, but in the meantime, Shabana Bhai has, has said that uh, um, I'm going to pay each artist a premium amount if they stay for a longer period of time. No, I'm only going to pay Shorojit if he stays for a longer period of time. Okay. <laughs> for the rest of you, have got Fuchka. That's it. Don't I'm not to the more. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, please. Uh, we'll take the card out of him. No, 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 no. <laughs> that, that is not fair. <laughs> yeah. no, I, don't, I don't want to miss Fuchka. <laughs> okay, okay. Then, then you get the Puchka as well. Please, please stay with um, us because it's something that we are all learning as well. Different perspective into one single thing. And not a single perspective could be said that this is the only perspective. There's so many ways of seeing the world. So, Ron, what was your experience like and what is your experience? You have worked with Concert Circuit over there as well. So, tell me something. So tell us something about your experiences. Uh, well, thank you, Shubhran. That's kind of you. I mean, asking me a question like that in front of, uh, you know, senior dadas like you all are, who has seen the world perhaps more than me. But I'm, I appreciate your kindness and generosity. Of course, I had my own share of, of experience uh, going around and traveling and, and to project or, or express my art. And I have always tried, like Abhid Dada said, to, to be honest, uh, to my expressions, what I have learned to respect my roots and and to respect my own identity in that process, and ultimately to tell my own story. So to create a, a sort of storytelling, you know, expressive. That's always uh, that that has been my subject and foundation of my artistic expressions, and I think if the music. I think every fine art, which is layered art, which is which is referred to as something classical form of art, has a, a universal appeal, and and the, the the artists who can touch these appeals in certain ways through their expressions, reaches out to the audience. They somehow connect. Now, I mean, basically, the audiences are always a mix. I mean, some of them are learn it, some of them likes, some of them likes to listen and think in their and be in their own world. 
some of them in the west especially has adherence to this uh, you know this this hippie era the the, the ascetic uh, esoteric you know ideas so they, they are into meditations and they like the deep meditative uh, aspect of our music so all of them together is a mix of audience and if i feel sometimes by mistake i happen to touch this universal appeal of expression uh, my my experience at the end of the concert is always getting uh, you know a happy smile or or a positive uh, look to my eyes that makes me feel uh, contented and that inspires me to move forward and practice one more day and and to create newer expressions so yeah, uh, i would just like to say that yes very and, very, na- very nice to put go on yeah yeah and and as you said dada about the western uh, collaborations i said i think that's what you hinted as well i think uh, incredible artists are around the world and and i always try to keep as you know uh, my my guru my mesho and also my dada guru ustad abdul halim zafar khasa they have always told me one thing for sure that even though you are learning in in into the uh, regime form of of sitar be always true to your own expressions you know be be always true to what you feel is your expression do not try to imitate it do not try to see the world through another one another person's eyes so i had always been uh, very open to that and that somehow became the philosophy of my life so i i i keep interest in in other spheres of artistic expressions i like the uh, world cinema andrei tarkovsky or abbas kirostami i am i am fond of western classical music with my limited interest i try to explore with respect and that's what i want to underline the point with respect i mean to say that i do not feel that i am on a hierarchy of the best music of the world or so some something like that so that's why this body language helps me to 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 understand the perspective of other artists and i have seen one thing in common that whoever is a dedicated artist they are always the same at the bottom of their own philosophy and and if i am playing with a violinist maestro if i am playing with a pianist or if i am playing with with a contemporary jazz masters i feel they have immense respect towards our music and and i also try to reflect the same in as a seeker as a student i also want to learn from them what i can also imbibe in my own expression so mm-hmm. that this i feel is an honest journey that i feel is right for me uh, and i can only advocate on my behalf and and i'm not saying that this is the right way to deal but this is my way so i had always been very happy about all these things sometimes things go south and then i all, always also try to understand from such situations and what what lies in me so i am always in a process of development and and uh, i feel i am still not there to to have you know invented my sort of uh, you know final expression so i have always been seeking and learning from every opportunity that 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 i am faced with so yeah. whether be in india uh, or abroad that's always my body language kya baat hai kya baat hai beautifully said uh, rohan and that brings me to sharojit sharojit um now that we have entered a zone which is about collaborative work and uh, um the 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 extent to which sitar as an instrument could be taken sitar and indian classical music could be taken sitar as an instrument could be taken or instru- indian classical music in its purest form so these are different areas right so uh, let let us now concentrate on this part where through collaborative work how you think sitar could be taken and uh, brought to a much wider audience who might be interested in perhaps that collaborative work but might not be interested in pure raga music as well there are lots of people in this world would you how how do you deal with that yes absolutely i in my opinion 
music is more about the effect rather than uh, its form, its genre, its uh, technical perplexities. When we stand in front of Taj Mahal, uh, it's no, not required to state anybody the, the intricacy, the arabesque of the, uh, the monumental effort behind their patience and hard work. Uh, and incessant hard work. So, if nobody it, cares about the architecture. You mean everybody yes, is uh, yes. carried, everybody is carried effect, out by the you know beauty of it. Yes, the ultimate effect and the soothingness, the uh, effect on listeners' mind. Whoever listeners and what I believe, a good uh, good music can affect even on animals. I have seen uh, when. We, we all have seen, we used to practice uh, Palta Sapat even, even uh, in the morning I was uh, practicing some Ulta Jala on Lalit. Uh, some birds, they used to sit uh, in front of the window. Yeah, I, I, had a, I had a very similar, uh, Shorajit, I have to add, I have had a very similar experience when I was practicing Gamak and all the cows left the whole zone. So, uh, <laughs> jokes about, please go on. No, no, I, I am um, just telling it. Uh, music has a good effect and good vibes in everybody's uh, cerebral portion and so everybody's I, I, nervous system also. Kidding. Every, yeah. every, yeah, every single creature. So, good. if we create something good, uh, if we don't want to make it hasjaru. Uh, in your previous discussion, if we don't want to make a hash jaru or bokacho, then we have to climb on that one peak of the mountain amongst the seven uh, peaks. So if, okay, if, so we, that, if we want, that, that, is the, that is my point. Beautifully said. Our musicality, said. our aesthetic sense, that makes us all. That makes the, so, the effect of the music. Beautifully said. So, uh, Obhishek Molli, um, uh, this is my uh, uh, a similar question to you. You have uh, you have worked on different genres as well. You have done a lot of collaborative work along with your expertise in North Indian classical music. You have also imbibed many things which are Carnatic that you have brought um, into your own playing in North Indian classical uh, music, you have uh, thought about in a deeper way. So if you could speak a little bit about your own journey in that. Yeah, your microphone is off, Abhishek. You have to put on your microphone. Sorry. Uh, it all started the way I was exposed uh, to the world when I started traveling to the western countries just like how rohan said it was so fascinating to see that the way they practice music in the same note and the same expression uh, how they are expressing it through their instruments like the expression of love the expression of sorrow the expression of all human emotions uh, all all throughout the world in all different kinds of music i mean in, especially in instrumental music even if it or even if it is a song, if you, even if you don't understand the language, you, from the feel of it, you can understand what the emotion it is trying to express, isn't it? So it's like that. So that that opened my eyes, and that's how I started to respect the other cultures and started learning from them, started collaborating with them, and in the process of collaboration, uh, I tried to learn their ways of seeing what I'm trying to see, uh, like expressions because at the end of the day when you're performing your expressions are what matter how you're expressing whatever you're playing or whatever you're singing uh, that that expressions need to get across to the audience and then uh, coming back to india the same collaborative mind started exploring the carnatic zone because my uh, when i started playing in uh, bandish fusion with Pandit Bikram Ghosh, that is where I uh, was exposed to the Carnatic part. 
where Pandit Eshekar Ji, uh, Pandit uh, um, Vishwaras Ji played the Ghatam, Eshekar Ji played the Mridangam, and I was so fascinated, like the way the Indian tabla and the Carnatic, uh, you, you know, the instruments, the percussion, percussion instruments, they, they, would, they would gel. Like our Tindal is their Adital, our Rupak is their Mr. Chapu. The way they are seeing the Tal, it's the same cycle, but they're in, in India itself, the way they are seeing the Tal is so different. And uh, the way they are calculating the beats, micro beats, that's so fascinating, the mathematics. So, I mean, uh, it's, it's all about how you're being fascinated by the things that are going around you. So, uh, yeah, started playing in different fusion bands, projects, Bandi Fusion, uh, uh, Rhythmscape. And that's how the um, antenna became, started to become wider, wider in the sense accumulation, like knowing, knowing other subjects, knowing other musicians, knowing their art. And, uh, and then when you start to, when you start to like uh, gel with them, that is when you find, start finding your own uh, shortcomings because uh, uh, we are not trained the, we are trained in a traditional music where we are trained in a particular way. Now, when you go out and you mix with people, it's like you're trained in a particular language. Now you're trying to talk to another person from who speaks another language. And then you're trying to bridge the gap. So that is when you start finding new ways to communicate. That is when you start changing uh, your approach. You change your personalities. You change your uh, musical expressions at times. And sometimes we also bring changes to our instruments. Also, that is that is that is how the electric sitar came into my mind. Uh, like I always wanted to play the uh, acoustic sitar, even in a uh, band or a fusion setup. But the problem is, when you're playing in a band or a fusion, you're dealing with very loud instruments like a drums, like a drummer playing, like an electric guitar, like the bass guitar. Now, sitar essentially is a very cute. soft instrument. True. Is a very soft instrument. Now, if you want to express yourself, uh, it's not like you can say, "Hey, stop! I'm going to play now." That doesn't happen. Like, and everybody is expressing, and they're, they're, the, the energy level is different uh, compared to a classical concert. So that is when you want to stand out. That is when I felt like, okay, if I am like, no matter how how loudly I'm playing, uh, I'm not being able to express myself. That is how this idea of electric sitar came into my mind. So I had to do some compromises. There are things that I cannot do on an electric sitar and there are things that I cannot do on an acoustic sitar. But then that's how you look at it. I mean, you have to create your own, uh, I would say, uh, create Voice. a different avatar of yourself. You have True. to create different avatars of yourself, I mean, depending on the situation. So when you're playing a classical concert, you cannot think like uh, it's you're playing a fusion concert and when you're really playing a fusion concert you cannot be thinking like playing a classical concert True. so that is how your approach changes that is how new approach new approaches are born beautifully said Abhishek. it's uh, revealing thank you so i think um, see the problem with 11 of us together in a normal setup we'll be having kebabs and chai and all these things which we cannot have and it looks weird when we are eating kebab in the video, but unfortunately, we really you can order and speak right if you want. I can give you my address. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so, so we can we, we can order each other for you know. I I should order for you. You should order for Ovikda. Ovikda should order for Obishtek like this. We, we all. Well, so um, so um, for today, let's kind of go to the final segment, wrapping up, wrapping it up, and uh, we'll come back once again and talk about the unfinished uh, talk. You know, we can come back once again. Mm -hmm. So um, we have said so much about expression, about riyaz, about talim, about collaborations and musicality, and how we deal with life as musicians. Um, Right now, the, the time that we are seeing has completely altered the concert circuit, where concerts are happening not in the physical space, not just in the physical space, but also in an online way. Like, for example, what we are doing right now, it's not a concert, but it's a, um, a discussion that we are having on the internet. Uh, and there's a kind of 
feeling that we are talking and there are other people who are taking part in it. They're, they're putting questions. It's a, it's a more inclusive kind of thing. So uh, nowadays, uh, I mean, uh, the majority of musicians are playing online as well. Some are playing um, just from their pages. They're enjoying their time and they're playing. And some are playing, um, um, you know, paid concerts, uh, some combination of all these things. How do you see uh, the near future of concert performance? If I can ask that question to Deep. Uh, I think, uh, no, there is uh, two aspects of this uh, question. One is uh, from this time onwards, if it is everything that gets open, this uh, uh, online thing will be there. So uh, why? Because uh, uh, we can reach to wider audience. You know, at the same time, but uh, our music, I feel, it's uh, more like uh, play in front of live audience. This is this is nothing can beat this, right? So uh, absolutely. But, uh, the thing is that uh, our music is something which is like uh, even for me, I I prefer to have uh, maybe twenty people in my audience and a uh, small uh, my field. So this is how I feel like this. Our music should. Uh, sounds best in this, but we also play. You know, we have to play in uh, huge, in, in front of huge number of audience. Uh, this is another thing because we have to do that. But uh, uh, now come to the digital part. So there is so many websites. There are so many uh, platforms. Uh, you can sell your ticket first of all. So uh, it's not only that you have to learn this music for your lifelong, you have to also earn something because this is our profession. It's not that we can't uh, play for free. Uh, this is, this, this, we shouldn't do this. So uh, what you can do is uh, like, or we all can do, we, are, we all are doing, and even those who are uh, younger generation, younger than me. So uh, they have a doubt in their mind. Even lots of students come to me and ask me, the, you know, where, uh, why, why, what do you think about us that, uh, will be there any opportunity to, for us that we can earn from this? So earning from uh, out of music is very difficult or any art form is very difficult. But this, uh, uh, this digital platform makes it easier. Why? Because uh, in all over the world, there is, uh, you know, we have listeners, but they can't come to Kolkata if he or she is living in Los Angeles. So they can buy a ticket and they can listen to us or listen to this music. And maybe if, if they are listening, maybe their kids are also listening because they all are listening together. So slowly, slowly, it will develop a newer generation who will like this music. So, if so you are you're positive about the, the, the concert circuit and the audience base uh, making a comeback uh, in, in different ways. One is the online way where a lot of people listen to you and the other is the uh, physical space where a lot of people come and listen and you, you are very positive about the future. I, we have to be positive about it because you know right. music is like a language it will change but it will never stop right so it will change its way it will change its uh, formation but the audience will be there it doesn't matter which music we are playing uh, well, the audience will be always there but we have to uh, approach them in their way like so, so I'm taking is, a cue from there. Sorry, go on. Uh, Deep, uh, you finish after so, the call. Uh, it's like it's like uh, somebody is very uh, sick. He, he or she can't leave their house. So what she he or she will do? She will either go to YouTube. But if we have given the opportunity that to see uh, an artist live, no, because uh, then they, he or she can see that this music is actually playing somewhere in the world uh, in that time. So this is, I think, there's a good part. It's but, a wonderful uh, part. Uh, yeah, saying, uh, saying that, my point, uh, playing for free, I, uh, it's, it's something which will really ruin our musical, you know, this atmosphere. We, nobody True. should play for free, and nobody True. should ask True. musicians to play for free concerts. True. In I live agree. or in any, any. Yeah, that awareness needs to come. And so I'll also add another point to it. What about exposure? Because if you if you have a phone or a computer, you can come online anytime. 
But if, if you think about how we craved to listen to a few artists, it's the, one of the reasons was that they were coming once a year, twice a year, or maybe thrice a year. So there's this expectation that this person yeah. is going to play a different rag or a different way of expression or different the, the novelty yeah. aspect. The novelty, the aspect. novelty so, aspect of art. Yeah, exactly. So very important. Exactly. So Vita, please. Yeah. Yeah, uh, as, uh, yeah, 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 please, yeah. please, please. So, well, the, I think uh, this is the another part, right? Uh, the main thing is that listeners or audience are not fools. They know who uh, to whom to listen. They have their own playlist. In you, if you go to someone's phone, those who are not, uh, you know, uh, they are not uh, they are normal listener. They are those who listens all kinds of music. If you go to the phone, you will find their own playlist. So they they ha they True. knows what they want to listen. So uh, it True. doesn't matter. Uh, it's an amateur musician or somebody who is coming regularly in Facebook and expre True. express his or her feelings through music or True. any kind of art form. True. But if he is or she, if she or she is good, it, you, there has to be a certain listener for him or her. Sure, but nicely said. It's very uh, positive, and I like that. Uh, Obigda, you were saying uh, something, please. After that, Rohan. As I, I was, I was, I was just uh, extending your point. You know, uh, any sort of art form survives in the novelty aspect. If you have regularly, even if you have regularly every day, you are having biryani. You know, after some time, you won't want to have it. You know, so this is what live music is sometimes giving. You know, that uh, uh, could be uh, change the idea or the habit of the listener. You know, so I, I will listen to this artist for five minutes and then go to other page and listen to that artist for seven minutes. And this the whole gamut of our performance might be lost in down in time in some way. But one point as deep has said, and you've said that it also could add in a positive way that, well, we are performing live concerts and that has been uh, being streamed. So not only that, because our um, art is actually meant to be chamber music and people listening to it. So we get inspiration from their um, absolutely, reactions. Absolutely. Yeah, but so what we nice don't get in life. Yeah. True, true. I, I that interaction with the audience that makes or, or breaks a performance. Otherwise you are playing for yourself. And uh, exactly. you know sometimes because of the uh, accompanying artists, because of the people listening to you. For example, you know, if you're playing in front of vocalists, mm -hmm. you'd be wanting to play a different kind yeah. of Changes, uh, you know, things changes. and things and if you are playing in front of people who might not be understanding the subtleties, you might be playing, choosing a different kind of um, yes. raga. You know, yeah. scales yeah. Yeah. of those ragas might be more enticing for people and more engaging for those people uh, who are not yeah. as initiated. So, I mean, there's no meaning in showing the intricacies of uh, compositions or ragdari to somebody for whom. Um, you know, every rag is similar because they, that is an intellectual thing as well to understand the interfaces of rag that is. So, you mean what to said. play, when to play, and how to play. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sri Ram Krishna. Mm. Yeah, uh, Rohan. Mm, no, exactly. I, I was just going to say something similar to what Avik has already said. So, I would just let you move the conversation. <laughs> okay, uh, Shabanna bhai, I'll ask everybody the same question. Yeah, see, uh, uh, obviously we are pretty sure these days that this is going to be a parallel option in future also, right? Even if the live concerts start, even after that also, this will be a parallel, you know, Absolutely. parallel stream, yeah. right? True. Because of its, you know, a lot of positive effects, I think. True. One thing what Deep said, that people know very well whom to whom to listen, right? And one more thing is more fresh faces are coming up, right? Due to these digital platforms, True. right? Absolutely. Which people see if you are uh, doing concerts, big concerts, big venues, big you know, big uh, festivals, you get to listen uh, only few faces, right? But this is such a platform where every day you are given, not every day, maybe once in a while, maybe, but so you are getting to listen a lot of fresh faces and good faces, True. right? True. Very quality, you know, uh, youngsters who are coming up, they are popping True. up almost every day. So that this is a very boost 
to this fraternity for this platform. Absolutely. No right. doubt. About it. In the see, end of the day, end of the day, music will speak its own language. Right? Those will only survive who are really good. Right. And uh, those are maybe not really good, but good, they will also survive. But those who are really not good won't survive. That may that be through physical stop. platforms, maybe phys physical platforms or the digital platforms. So Absolutely. when we are, you know, kind of compulsive, we have that compulsion to accept this as a new, you know, way of expressing and streaming our music. So why not to accept it? Yeah. So I, I but one thing Deep also mentioned, but yeah, one thing so one thing Deep also mentioned that no no professional. See, on a digital platform, if I am doing uh, with my Wi-Fi from my house, right? If I wish to play for free, you cannot stop me. This is entirely my will. Right? Absolutely. But the thing is, the between the among the professional artists, even who are coming up, the youngsters, they should keep an you know professional ethics. If it, if I'm adding to the fraternity, if my effort, my playing, my music is adding to the fraternity, so that must be kept all the time in mind. So I'll I'll take that question to Ram. So what? Is um, willing to uh, play before people and uh, they are often coming online but maybe uh, uh, they could have waited a little bit more to blossom as well yeah those kind of people are also there fantastic musicians are there and uh, normal you know everyday musicians are also there so different kind of people over there and uh, do you think that the the impact of the facebook like or the love sign or whatever yeah, emote icons and all these things, does it dictate um, how we are going to come online? Does it affect us? Do you feel that uh, you know, we are more online uh, to express uh, our opinions, talks, music, and whatever uh, more often because of those likes? For example, let me give you one example. If somebody plays and nobody likes, nobody, not a single person, is that person going to keep on playing every day? So what, do you, what is your opinion about it? Um, I will just take a couple of steps back to say this. Sure, uh, sure. I think when YouTube uh, and similar platforms came maybe 10, 12 years ago, that was a kind of liberation and freedom for musicians. When anyone with the Wi-Fi connection and a Google account can share their music with the world, previously it was not the case few institutions who were entitled to broadcast music of music of others it was their discretion whom to choose whom not to choose and there are several factors which are good which are not so good and all but with this liberation what happened is everyone is entitled to share their music and as deep mentioned very uh, wisely that the audience is having their own discretion whom to listen and whom not to listen after listening a couple of times they will understand okay i will go with them and i will not go with so this is the first thing. And second thing is the, you know, uh, the reactions, comments, we being music students or musicians, whatever we think ourselves, once I, you give like or comment to me, you have one perspective. And once you, you are giving a like or comment to a beginner, you have a different perspective because you Very know valid. their level is not that high, but they have prospect and you want to encourage them. So we all do it with different uh, honest intentions. I will not say it is always something, some calculations and all. We have some honest intentions for doing that. What I feel sorry about people doing, uh, who have done eight, 10 hours of Riyaz, they also, they are also fascinated about number of views and likes. Okay, my song has got this M, this K. Once they post, I get astonished who knows the value of Riyaz, how they go about the quantity. They know the value of quality. So again, we have to have the quantity because we need to grow our audience base. But I have to quality should be add, our first preference. Yeah. I have to add something because we also agreed on one thing that uh, you also agreed, that audience 
knows what is good and what is bad and they choose yeah. what to listen to and what not to listen to yeah. that brings us to this weird situation where more likes means that more people understand what music is and their liking is validating that this is a better artist do you agree with that well, i mean i don't mean separate... to say that i am saying that i'm asking a question because sure, you sure. both the ideas were shared by you that's right yeah what what i think is there are currently there are different tricks if you use different types of phrases in your facebook or youtube upload you will get more views i have uh, i got to know about some beautiful channel for whom facebook and youtube is imposing some restrictions because some because of some unknown reason there are certain ways to purchase views and likes so blindly how we can talk about uh, depend on these likes and views million views million followers which can be purchased i am not saying everyone is purchasing there are there are genuine musicians who are getting their quality is great and they have great on fan following right so yeah nice so who who is going to speak uh, deep i think deep is raising hand yeah deep deep yeah deep. you know the thing is that uh, it depends on the artist that for for him or her which is more important likes views or uh, comment some from some uh, known or known friends or you know legendary artists for like uh, there is so many people who are posting their videos and maybe it uh, it might hit like uh, 5000 or 50000 or 70000 but uh, for for say if i am post something uh, and there is only 10 views but there is a comment of shubhanilda that i liked your performance that for me is fine because uh, you know uh, shubhanilda liked it it, it it's it, it has more value than 1000 likes you know i remember there is a one video i posted um, uh, in the uh, facebook so there is uh, shapan choudhury ji commented after listening to this so it has a more more value to me than that million views so it depends on the artist that uh, you know which is more important to that artist wonderful right and one another thing uh, shaman nada said that uh, artist can uh, play live from their home that that's different story but my my uh, point was that there is so many organizations are there who is making facebook pages and asking uh, artists for playing for free so this is i am against yeah, that's why yeah. that's why deep that's why i said the professional ethics and exactly. ethics it must be there exactly. in that exactly. in that context what you said in that context we we claim ourselves as artists we need to be very much united in that way so that nobody you know tamper that you know that line between ethics and absolutely you know right absolutely agree with you yeah. absolutely agree with you so that's the, nice I, mean, i think nice. more than because people are tampering we artists are tampering that rule right that's why the organizers are also requesting us in that way that, that, if we are, we decide if we decide that we we are not going to do that way yeah so i think this will be so you mean be the change the that's day. what you mean yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah. yeah but beautifully said so i think that brings us to the um uh to the to the end of this discussion i think we have uh spoken just a lot about beat. sorry just the last bit the other there are many tabla players who are very curious about certain questions and i think oh, the the yes, gist sure, please let's take it what should be the role of a tabla player and they're expecting an answer from all of us so okay I let's let's, to let, let's and raise your hand whoever wants to say it because hands. many friends and senior dada are also writing there so i just wanted to remind you <laughs> yeah so please please raise your hand and whoever wants to speak let's let's ask uh, shorojit what do you expect from uh, this question is from our uh, uh, dear friends i i don't know exact names who uh, because i cannot see the feed um it's, so there was pran gopal yeah, there is moinak banerji and pran gopal da moinak da shurojato bhai i don't i don't see his uh, question but anyway there was okay. this question i have it's some more, more or less similar something. similar kind of uh, yeah. yeah yeah we we have a very important role of tabla player and we 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 and tabla are not different actually we both are artists and we perform together so uh, there was a day where a discrimination happened and i am not uh, i'm agreeing that it, it's it's not true that today is not happening 
today also is it is happening some uh, in, in some aspects in uh, regarding payment regarding sound level regarding uh, every every other thing but we need to respect and we need to give equal importance uh, because uh, as as because i have performed with uh, many stalwart artists and legends uh, with of our country what i have seen uh, being an accompanist i i personally feel i am also i have also performed like an accompanist I, as an accompanist uh, accompanist is the main thing and in in fact uh, without a proper accompaniment we you, we all are agree that uh, true without a true essence of uh, theka and the uh, mizaz it's it's not true. possible for us to portray the actual essence of the raga and the actual true, absolutely things true true i, I think Nicely we all agree. yeah i think we all agree on that so i think um, I just I just, uh, I just remember yeah, sure uh, just a yeah, short sure uh, you know a short story uh, once i had the big opportunity to play i mean i was in i happened to be in mumbai at that time and i was residing with dada guru ji at his at his residence and he took me somewhere with him in the evening that there is a there is a event come with me and i went there with my sitar so he asked me to also take the sitar so i went there it was some kind of a event or you know, inauguration so there were some artists there and especially for young people and there were some dancers as well young people so i went there and i there was another tabla player and so we both decided i mean he asked us to play there for 10 15 minutes and all just a short uh, moment that i learned a lot in my life that we went on stage and the organizer announced my name and everything and they gave me a bouquet of flower before i start my performance and then everything was said i was supposed to start and uh, guruji dadu came out from his seat took the flower from my hand took the microphone and and he said that this flower belongs to this sweet child and he gave it to the tabla player friend and he mm-hmm. and then scolded the organizer in front of everyone this should never happen both of them are artists and you should give respect equally yeah, both of them. beautifully and, beautifully and very nice very nice made my philosophy quite right at that young age and since then my my outlook towards having a tabla player on stage is like a conjugal uh, partner i mean on stage as a musical music making exactly. so i think his part is equal his part is brilliant exactly. perhaps more selfless and perhaps more exactly. who can give more to my you know progression of the ideas so uh, i i as shorojit da was trying to say that in the earlier times there were some discriminations i think this have already changed and we should carry out absolutely this. And, and respect the presence of their beauty of art you know absolutely just what to say yes. completely completely right. we so we uh, always we'll, we'll finish it up but uh, um um yeah, i think please. it's very important to finish because it uh, yeah, all of you all of us we have to go so uh, let's finish with each one of you have raised your hands and then we'll call it a day so murchana please your microphone is off muchuna so you're you're uh, audible from obishek's mic okay <laughs> now it's fine yes i think the role of tabla is really very important in every performances it is the real inspiration uh, the tabla provides the inspiration to play what we play next uh, it is is the tabla that says actually it's like a conversation and it inspires to play now uh, the next thing or you know actually um, it gives a mood ha ah, the mood comes from the tabla and you know tala kala priya manam that means who will give the tal so the rhythmic pattern the rhythmic cycle everything is shown by the tabla so this is one of the most important factor uh, without this will be handicapped actually so True. this is one of True. the very important uh, instrument Absolutely. and uh, without it, it there cannot be any performances yeah true deep you know once i asked baba that uh, what is uh, your take on accompaniment so he replied that per se uh, just put it this way 
uh, you are riding a car. So accompaniment is that wheels. Now, good accompaniment uh, should be, you know, the wheels should be in the circle. You just uh, imagine the wheels are in the squarish. What will happen to your car? So this is the exact rule of an accompaniment. For the, you know, uh, it's a, it's uh, if you, you will you will have a bumpy ride if the wheels are squarish. So uh, it it stuck my mind. So for me, it's like uh, without a good accompaniment, it's not possible to uh, you know express your emotion properly. Yeah, but Shoma, you have something to say? I think after Obishek Odigari. Yeah. So he's actually always in a good tabla player. Always create a good mood in the stage. A uh, good sitar is when he finished Ala of George Hala, already the rag established, has been established. But without Tabla, you know, it will not proceed in, you know, that, that way. True. Tabla True. always create good mood, give good, uh, to the, you know, the, the artists. And, and, you know, it's very hard even. Accompaniment is very hard because when a tabla player is playing solo, that is a totally different thing. And when Absolutely. a tabla player is accompanying, it's totally Jabba. different. That means so, the a tabla player at that time, you know, is, is feeling the mood of the artist and also the composition and, and the audience. And, True. and that person, True. The, the accompanist tabla player, then he balanced everything, a good tabla player, which reached the you know concert in, in the in the that peak. So Chabate. I I want to thank Pran Bhai, uh, Moina and others for asking these questions. Thank you, uh, thank all you, all tabla players. Thank you, Moina. Uh, yes, yeah. Thank so you. I think tabla a very important thing. Completed. Chabate. A very important thing to note over here is that. The middle part of the tabla is called sur. I think there is nothing more to say about it. Why should it be sur? That is the. Yeah, if you consider, if you consider music. music, if you consider music, Shubhodil, I mean, sur and tal both consist music, right? Absolutely. So how could you separate uh, each you cannot. from other? You Absolutely. cannot, right? The and the, when the tal starts, the yeah, together. when the tal and rhythm part starts. In my opinion, it's a 50-50 carriage, right? It's a conversation. In a conversation, True. it cannot be done that only one of you is speaking and other one is getting just nodding his head. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That's not a conversation. True. It's not a conversation. Yeah? So it's equally when you are carrying a presentation equally, then it becomes an accompaniment and it's, it's a total music, right? True. So, yeah, you should please go back. Tabla player is a sole companion. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So, personally, we, we create my... music together, not alone. It's impossible it is... to uh, do. Rambai, sorry, something. yeah, Ram, please go on. Yeah, uh, I will talk about my choice. I have seen, yes, uh, ah. I have played with uh, Pranda, you know, Moina, uh, and all, all, all our Tabla friends. But what, what I have felt is this quality is there in them. The tabla accompanies who enjoy my alab jod jala at the end during exactly. the girl, I love to play with them more. When we are doing some expression or in alab, when they enjoy that reflects in their accompaniment also. So yeah, this it's is a vice versa thing, thing, you know. And also the vice versa thing, thing. yeah. And it's also very much mutual. Vice versa thing. Absolutely. Yeah, it's very much mutual. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. exactly. So we need to exactly. appreciate them as well. And yeah, correct. Expression. Yes, absolutely. Beautiful. So we had a wonderful talk. I mean, well, I think we all learned a lot of things about each other and our own takes on life, uh, on music, and how we see the world and music, right? So it, it's such an honor to be over here uh, with all of you. And thanks for um, answering. And I, I, you know, it should not be seen as, as my project or anything. It's our project. We are going to keep on uh, addressing many other topics. I think as we said, it's not about the likes, it's about the people who would want to listen to us. Uh, we are speaking for them. So um, thanks to all the people who listen to us with so much attention, so much love, so much um, uh, importance. 
Uh, we do not even know whether we deserve that importance, but thanks for showering that love. And uh, would, we would try to come back once again. And thanks to all the panelists for um, coming together. A pleasure. It's such a that huge task to come a lot. together and express things together. And I am apologetic because, um, you know, I'm not a host as such. I'm a musician, a student of music. So it's very difficult for me to conduct in the very perfect way that a news anchor might do. You did a great job. You did a great job. I I tried my best. Um, There will be some mistakes. Please forgive me. And uh, we'll try to come back uh, with many more episodes and talk about many things. One, you know, one... Um, I have one request to you. Yes. You can arrange or do something later on. It will be amazing if you arrange something when we will talk and we will share our music like the previous our ancestors they did. Yes. So we will have meeting. We have to meet for that. We have to meet for that. That will be wonderful. I, I wait for that day when all of us we can sit together and do real and can. talk about. Raga, the tal, the compositions, you know, yeah. all the things that, that we talked about. Amazing. I mean, yeah. it's, it's simple talk is like lifeless. I think when we add music to it, it makes a lot of sense. And also so, for Fuchka. Oh yeah, Fuchka has, <laughs> is a must. Of course, Without must. Fuchka, we start with the Fuchka and <laughs> then we go to biryani and kebab and all these things. Okay, we are not going to... <laughs> <laughs> so, so thank you thank you all thanks uh, to all the people who listen to us thank you so much thank you so thank much you so for much, being Deo. a part of this thank you, thank you to this, you, thank you good night for good hosting night. such a Very wonderful possible. show thank you thank you thanks. it's because of you all thanks thank you. for coming and we'll we'll meet very soon once again yes definitely yes. okay bye-bye. namaskar sure. bye bye okay good namaskar bye bye good night good, good, good night good night all of you good night bye bye good night